On the call of the meeting to your order. Please rise and join Mr. Gallagher on the piano for the Star Spangled Banner. Thank you very much, Mr. Gallagher. We're going to break with tradition tonight due to the heat. I'm not going to wear my jacket. So I hope you all forgive me. Um, the front of the room is also, so if anyone else wants to take their jackets off, go ahead. Otherwise, you'll have me passed out on the floor. Um, we've, we've gone ahead. We've Passed the override. Now we have the budgets that Mr. Tosti has re and the Finance Committee have revised for us. So we're going to try and move through these. If we get through the budgets and then one or two other articles, we could be done tonight. Um, I might point out if there's something just a resolution and only a resolution is in front of us, we really don't need to debate it too much. Maybe one or two people, but let's try and keep the resolution debates very short so we could finish. Um, this is kind of silly, but any town meeting members who have yet to be sworn in? Seeing none, um, I recognize the chairman of the board of selectmen, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I don't want to move the next um, paragraph, but I will. It is moved that if all the business of the meeting is set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Monday, June 13, 2011. Second? All in favor? Yes. All right, so moved. No. Oh, you want a no vote? No. All right, who doesn't want to vote? All, all opposed? No. Okay, then finish up. Um, are there any announcements or resolutions? Mr. Um, Leonard has one. Then Ms. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. Mr. Moderator, town meeting members, I think we're all aware, but there are two people in the hall tonight which have been in the news, courtesy of the Arlington Advocate, the past week of seven days, week of ten days, excuse me, which celebrated a uh, great membership, let's say, in town meeting member, of course, at this particular time. I'm speaking about two 50-year people, Elsie Fiore and Harry McCabe. <laughs> well, as we know, in some circles, they're called Chip and Dale and Pixie and Trixie. It's hard to imagine what went on probably about 50 years ago, but I could imagine that probably 50 years ago we were not paying for bottled water. I would imagine we probably had free TV at that particular time. 
And if we really think hard enough, we might have some microphones in town hall that worked at that particular time also. With your approval, Mr. Town Moder Mr. Moderator, and the approval of uh, the, the people here, ladies and gentlemen, I would like uh, Elsie Fury and Harry McCabe to please come up and join me for a couple of minutes so I can present them with a little gift that we have. Mrs. Fury, Mr. McCabe, please come forward. Harry? Harry? Oh, he's waiting for Elsie, his, his cohort. <laughs> Elsie and Harry, I cannot imagine what you've gone through in 50 years, <laughs> but I would like to say that I can imagine that you've probably instructed a lot of people, helped a lot of people on their way, and according to the article, you're going to continue to do that. So on behalf of myself and all your friends at town meeting, I would like you to accept this small gift from us, both past and present. And the, you have to open it up here. Oh, we have to open it up. <laughs> you too, Harry. You could be working on yours, Harry. <laughs> Harry, you could be working on yours. <laughs> Don't forget to recycle the paper. <laughs> I don't want to get yelled at, Ellen. Oh, come on, you got part, part of the agreement. <laughs> I got people looking for the paper. He says I have to open it. <laughs> we don't know what's in it. said they were going to explode. I uh, want to say thank you to everybody for who have been so nice to me all uh, through the years. And, um, but I am going to brag a little and say that in the 50 years, I think I've only missed four nights. And uh, that's not meetings, that's nights. And I know that Harry hasn't missed any. And I know there are other people here who have had, uh, you know, perfect attendance probably since they started. So, uh, I don't know, it's, I've just enjoyed it. I enjoy all the people and, and uh, I like being here. Thank you again. Thank you all. Just a few words. Uh, it's a little overpowering, not, not really necessary, but anyways, um, the greatest gift that uh, you can give us is the right to stand here and make a jackass out of myself. <laughs> <laughs> and in the 50 years that I've been here, uh, I have to say that I've done it a number of times. 
But regardless, it's a precious gift that we have, all of us. Uh, this experiment that's going on, what, 200 and how many years, 35 years, uh, which we're continuing here tonight, is just remarkable. And I came to Wellington from the big city over there, no names, and I was somewhat active in, uh, I don't want to say politics, but in uh, uh, civics, if you will. And when I came to Arlington, it was very different, very, very different. Uh, it was a real eye-opener to find out that all the things that we had been taught in our uh, lessons at school were true in Arlington. They may not have been true where I came from, but anyways, it was a real eye-opener and I think uh, it had something to do with uh, uh, my uh, interest in getting involved. I hate to uh, give advice unless it's asked for, but uh, I would like to offer uh, some free advice, uh, take it or not. But over the years, as you go through the process, you're up, you're down, you're winning, you're losing, and Sometimes it's discouraging, and sometimes it's enheartening. But the advice that I would like to leave with you is this, that no matter what, we are doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you both for your years of service, and thank you, Mr. Leonard. Uh, Ms. Rowe? Just briefly, um, yesterday we had a vote that is not unlike what Harry said. It's a victory for some and not for others. Um, there are many people in this room who work very hard. It means an awful lot to an awful lot of people, a lot of young families. And I just want to say thank you. Um, and here is the chair of the school committee. Who wants to say the same thing? Thank you for saving our schools. And, <clears throat> and any other announcements or resolutions? Seeing none. Any reports or committees? Ms. Barron. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sherry Barron. I live at 10 Raleigh Street in Precinct 7, and I'm a commissioner on the Arlington Human Rights Commission. I've put a copy of our brochure on each of your seats, and I thought I'd have some left over, but I don't, which is a good thing. Um, and there is a report of our past year's activities in the town's annual report. But for those of you who have not yet reached page 51, or who are saving the annual report for summer reading, I'm here to give you a snapshot of what we've been doing. Every few years we like to come before you and report on our activities and thank you for your continued support of our endeavors. We thank the Finance Committee for recommending continued funding and we thank you town meeting members who vote for that funding. We thank town and school officials and staff who support us by exemplifying respect for the diversity of our town every day. 
We thank those of you who have attended our dialogues, our programs, who have stopped by our Town Day booth, and we thank you individually for reaching out in your own way to make Arlington a more welcoming community for all who live and work here. Some of you town meeting veterans remember that the Arlington Human Rights Commission was born in this room 18 years ago. We held our first meeting in January of 1994. I am one of the three commissioners who have been with the group since the beginning, and I will tell you that through the years it has been an honor to serve on the commission alongside dozens of remarkable people, some of whom are in this room, who have been committed to making this a welcoming community. Before I go on, I'd like to ask our current commissioners, who are also town meeting members who are present, to stand. And that would be Gary Horowitz, Nancy Sweeney, and Bill Shea. And Bill is also one of our original members. <clears throat> This past year has been busy and productive, and I'm happy to report the following highlights. In February, we took part in a Stand Against Racism initiative hosting three human rights events. Throughout the year, we held three Arlington Dialogues, during which we addressed dating violence, bullying, and the fine line between church and state. At the Otteson Middle School, the Commission helped the school in their response to an anti-Semitic incident and subsequently donated books to the library in honor of the students who very bravely came forth and reported the incident. In November, the Commission, in conjunction with the Vision 2020 Diversity Task Group, co-sponsored a civil discourse program for town officials, and we will continue to work on expanding this program. In early winter, the Commission worked closely with the Arlington Police Department after notification that an extremist white supremacy group was planning to come to Arlington prior to a performance of the Laramie Project at the Arlington Center for the Arts. Although the group did not come as planned, the Commission and the Arlington, Arlington Police Department had a presence at this event. Members of our Commission meet regularly with school representatives to discuss ways to increase diversity within our public school staff and how best to handle human rights issues in the schools. The Commission also worked with the school committee and the police this past year to encourage training of school administrators and to help them develop protocols and techniques to investigate bullying. All year long, the Commission continues to maintain records of hate crimes and incidents and works in cooperation with the police department in order to track their severity and frequency. Chief Ryan frequently calls upon us to discuss incidents and collaborate on ways in which to handle them. We are very fortunate that he has been a stalwart supporter of human rights since he has become our police chief. And I'd like to thank him. I don't, I see him there. I'd like to thank Chief Ryan and his staff for their support throughout the year and throughout all the years that he's been here. <laughs> Last year, six incidents were reported to the commission. Two were found not to be within our jurisdiction. In the other four, we work to mediate the situation and help the parties resolve their issues. The Commission also consults with the Community Safety Department on the efforts to monitor potential racial profiling by reviewing their ongoing crash data statistics. So that's pretty much how we spent our last year. And now that I've given you a picture of what we've been doing, I want to end by asking for your help. We need you to be emissaries for us which is why I gave you the brochures. You are the representatives of your precincts, and you likely know a lot of your neighbors, and you could be the one called upon or alerted when someone feels that their human rights have been violated. Or you just might hear about an incident where our commission could be helpful. We don't have a large number of complaints reported yearly. And I have always said that that is both the good news and the bad news. It's good because it appears as though we are a very tolerant, welcoming community, and I believe that we strive to be just that. But it's bad because I think that we all know that there are incidents that go unreported every day. Because people who believe that they have been victimized are very often scared, ashamed, or simply unaware 
that there is an avenue they can take that might give them some relief. Sometimes all a person needs is someone to listen to them, lend them support, perhaps make the first phone call, and help guide them through the process, or at the very least, let them know that a process exists. Um, and this piece I, I, I put in towards the end because I read it to my husband and he reminded me of how important this is. Please take the brochure home with you and don't toss it. Put it on your fridge with a magnet or somewhere in your home where you can easily find it. If someone needs us, you should have our information at your fingertips. If you know of an individual that you feel falls within our purview, please let that individual or individuals know that we are here. Help them begin by taking the difficult first step of making a call to our office so that we can help. The only way we can be of assistance is if people know that we are here. This is Arlington. Arlington values its diversity, and its diversity is growing every day. It's one of the reasons people come to live in this town. I'd like us all to work together to make this a town that does not tolerate bigotry, prejudice, or unlawful discrimination of any kind. And I have just one more comment before I close. I know that it's warm and you want to, you want to finish tonight. I've been in your seat. Shortly before the horrific attacks on 9-11, several neighborhoods in town experienced a drop of horrendous white supremacist hate literature, and we planned a rally to bring the town together to show that we don't tolerate this in Arlington. A few days later, 9-11 happened, and the rally changed focus, and more than 3,000 citizens gathered in front of town hall. I began that evening's program with a quote that I believe should guide us every day, and I will end tonight with that quote, attributed to Pastor Martin Niemöller in Germany in 1945. The pastor was responding to a student's question regarding the failure of so many thousands of people to speak out against the Nazis. The student asked the pastor four words, how could it happen? And the pastor responded, first they came for the communists, but I was not a communist, so I did not speak out. Then they came for the socialists and the trade unionists, but I was neither, so I did not speak out. Then they came for the Jews, but I was not a Jew, so I did not speak out. And when they came for me, there was no one left to speak out. Please be that someone who helps someone else speak out. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barron. And any other reports or committees? Seeing none. Um, that Toyota Corolla 266HF3, your lights are still on in the parking lot. Uh, Mr. Tosti, can you take everything off the table? Uh, I move that everything that's on the table be taken off of it. Okay. Can all in favor please say yes? yes? All opposed? Okay, so all our articles are back up. Mr. Bean, for what purpose do you rise? Uh, yeah, come down, use the microphones, introduce yourself, name, precinct. David Bean, <laughs> Precinct 8. Uh, I move to reconsider Article 7. Uh, because of a combination of scheduling problems and poor planning, representatives of the Conservation Historical and Cemetery Commissions were unable to address town meeting a few weeks ago when this article was first put to the vote. They worked very hard on this proposal and hope you'll allow reconsideration of this article tonight so they'll have a chance to provide us with more information. Please vote. Yes, sir. To allow it. Did the gentleman it. vote on the prevailing side the original? Uh, uh, yes, he did. He, he on 425.11, he gave us notice for reconsideration, having voted on the prevailing side, sir. Did you vote on the prevailing side, sir? I did. Thank you. I asked him that that night. Go ahead, Mr. Bean. Are you finished? I'm finished. Okay. Does anyone else wish to debate whether or not we want to reconsider, or should we go right to the vote? Uh, Mr. Schlickman. Shuckman Precinct 9. It would have been nice if members of the delegation from the precinct that, that contains this parkland would have been notified that there was a move to bring it forth for reconsideration. This was a poorly considered proposal when it came before us 
on the first night of town meeting, it has not changed. We did the right thing in defeating it then. It would be the right thing for us not to reconsider it now and let them come back with a better proposal next year. The clean way to move a property into a cemetery district would be to transfer jurisdiction to the cemetery con uh, commission. This Mr. is a Swickley? bad idea. Yep. Please vote no. Okay, Sayer, care. Like okay, who are you the last guy? Okay, we have a motion, Mrs. Fiore. Oh, okay, I didn't see you, I'm sorry. On reconsideration itself. All right, he's already moved the question, Elsie, I'm sorry. All right, so we have a second on moving the question for reconsideration? Okay, so now the vote for reconsideration, it does require two thirds. All in favor of reconsidering Article 7, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. Okay, I couldn't tell if it was two thirds or not, so we're going to have to have a standing vote. Same tell as all, of, uh, all in favor of reconsideration, please rise. Reconsideration is a two third vote. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just too excited. That then, wait a second. We were voting. We're going to start again. I was confused. We we're voting on. It's been too long a break for me and it's too hot. We're now going to vote on Mr. Kerr's motion to terminate debate, which again requires a two third vote. All in favor of terminating debate, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. In my opinion, that was a two-third vote. All right, now we're going to vote on reconsideration. All in favor of reconsidering Article 7, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. In my opinion, that's a two-third vote against. <coughs> you need two-thirds. Uh, five people rose. So we're going to have a standing vote on whether to reconsider. All in favor of reconsideration, please rise. Um, same tellers, please. Six in the affirmative up front. I'm out of practice, sorry. Mr. Schlickman, how many? Nine. Nine on the left, nine. Mr. O'Connor? 22. 22 in the left center, 22. Mr. Trembley? 19. 19 on the right center. Mr. McCabe? 12. 12. All opposed to reconsideration. Ms. Mahan, two. Mr. Schlickman, 19. 19 on the left, two up front, 19 on the left. Mr. O'Connor, 16. 16. Mr. Trembley, 14. 14 on the right. And Mr. Um, McCabe, 22. 22. The vote is in the negative 68 to 73. We are not reconsidering number seven. That brings us to, I'm going to sit down please, hold on. Article 31. We have, the Selectman will report on this article. All right, the selectmen have put forth a vote of no action. All in favor of no action, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. Is an affirmative vote for no action. That brings us to 34. The selectmen would like to um, report no action on 34. On 34? 34. Do you have a substitute motion on 34, sir? Or 35? On 34. Okay. 
come forward. Yeah. Peter Howard, Precinct 10. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I have a resolution under Article 34, which you all got on May 16th. Um, it's <clears throat> another copy of it in the back of the hall today, <clears throat> along with the uh, presentation that we'd like to give. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, we'd like a few more minutes to give our more than <clears throat> for a total of 20 minutes. Um, okay, he's the gentleman is requesting 20 minutes of time. All in favor, please say yes. Opposed, say no. No. You have 10 minutes, sir. We'll do it in 10 minutes. Thank you. Um, may I go ahead? Yes. Yes. Yep. Your time's rolling. Go. Uh, Mr. Good, could we have the uh, re the resolution? What's your resolution, sir? <clears throat> Article 34. So you, this is just to remind you. Uh, could we have the first slide? <laughs> Three of us from the uh, town managers, pays uh, uh, your throw committee, with, uh, are, co are collaborating on this presentation. Uh, Myself, Ryan Ferrara, and um, Carolyn Dan, who's a contractor of the town, uh, advising on pay as you throw. Um, next slide. <clears throat> the plan, the uh, committee that we worked with have a, has a plan which is uh, spec specific to Arlington. These are the main points of it. Um, I won't read the slide. Basically, the, there's only one change. Residents would buy bags instead of using their black plastic bags or, or trash bin bins. They could put the bags in the bins. There are two, and there would be two size bags, a 30-gallon bag and a half-size bag, $2 or $1 a piece. Uh, there's no added town staff except briefly in the beginning uh, to get it started. Um, and that would be covered by a grant. And uh, the enforcement is, it should be rather straightforward since the haulers would simply pick up the special packs. Uh, I turn it over now to, to Ryan Ferrara. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, Ryan Ferrara, Precinct 4. Um, next slide, please. Um, okay, so just wanted to sort of hit on some of the highlights here. Uh, first thing is, if we were to implement this program, uh, you'd be buying your bags, basically your local grocery stores, CVS, that kind of thing. Uh, you wouldn't be paying, um, uh, there's no markup on this for taxes or anything like that. Uh, the the, um, uh, the uh, places enjoy having this in because it's a sort of a way to bring people in and business in. Uh, the behavior is easy to learn because you're using a bag right now to throw out your trash. You'd be doing the same here, It'd just be a town issued bag. Um, you can still use your barrel, you just be putting a bag within that barrel. And if you have extra recyclables, which is one of the objectives of this program, uh, you could use uh, your existing, uh, you could use a, a barrel. Uh, st the town has stickers and you'll be able to uh, throw out excess uh, recycling uh, via that method. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, the reason uh, you'd want to do something like this is, uh, first of all, the environmental benefits. You'd be encouraging more reuse and more recycling. Um, individual cost control, uh, you are going to be paying for those bags, so your capacity to stay within uh, one 33-gallon bag, which we anticipate most people in town would be able to do, uh, is uh, a positive thing and um, maintains it at your cost at $2 per week. Um, and uh, we also, of course, save the town money. We estimate that the total benefit of this program, when you combine all of the factors in, is a uh, net benefit of $2 million per fiscal year. Next slide. So here's how the breakdown is. There's three components to the savings. The first is the collection cost savings. Because waste management, our vendor isn't going to be picking up as many bags. It's less work for them, so we have a discount there. Uh, 44, roughly about 44,000. Uh, we're going to be throwing out less trash. 
and that's the savings there. And uh, the largest component of that is um, the uh, net bag revenue from the sale of those bags um, that we mentioned earlier. So um, it's a bit inverse here. You can see uh, if we are able to reduce our total tonnage on trash, uh, the more we reduce, uh, the actual um, and, and the net benefit actually goes down. The reason for that is uh, you're not selling as many bags, basically. So you're not bringing in the, in the same amount of revenue. So um, uh, with that next slide, I want to introduce Carolyn Dan from uh, MassDP, who's been a tremendous help to us for this. Uh, so Carolyn, I'll turn over to you. Thank you very much, Ryan, and thank you, town meeting members. Uh, um, so. The question here is often asked, why do, sorry, Carol and Dan for Rocka Dundee Road, Andover, Massachusetts. I'm a contractor to the town as a DEP contractor. Was that your point of order, sir? She's a contractor to the town. She's allowed to speak. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. So many times I'm asked, why, why change? Why change what we have? And so this is a short history of trash. Um, 50 years ago, your trash, you probably even remember, was mostly organic, and we threw it, we gave it to the pigs, and that was the right thing to do. And at some point in time, we invented landfills, a hole in the ground, and that was still for the right thing to do with mostly organic trash. And it was made sense at that point in time to have disposal be free and have it be local and have it be easy for everybody to get to. Somewhere along the line we discovered that we were actually having a lot of packaging and we invented recycling in the 1980s and everybody got behind recycling. And then we discovered that there were actually some nasty things in, that were going into the landfill. So we closed our landfills and we opened incinerators and in the year 2000 we instituted some Clean Air Act changes to the incinerator and upgraded the pollution control equipment, so now we no longer have a hole in the ground that's local and cheap. We have a distant and expensive high-tech incinerator. But we still have a funding system that's based on the local free disposal system, and our, our disposal system is no longer cheap. And so, may I have the next slide, please? We've done some kind of transition to pay as you throw in many towns. 132 towns across the state have done this, so Arlington has the benefit of choosing from the lessons learned in other towns, and this is just a sampling of some of the towns where it's been implemented. It has done has worked in large cities such as Worcester, smaller communities such as Concord and Natick, uh, and everything in between. And what we've seen is there is a dramatic and immediate change in behavior. And so we can see the before and the after, and the numbers you see here are tons of trash per household. So if you took a simple town that had 10,000 households, it might generate 10,000 tons of trash. Well, here in Arlington, you're actually better than that. You're only generating about 0.8 tons per household. But based on all the experience in all the other communities around the state, we project about a 20% reduction. Some communities have seen a 50% reduction because they started higher. You've been recycling well for many years. We still think there's room for improvement. A 20% reduction would bring you down to the 0.61 you see on that number on the chart. Many of the towns that I've worked with are very proud of their results, and I'm sure Arlington will be too when you implement this. Now I'll turn it back to Pete. Okay, you have two minutes, Mr. Howard. <clears throat> There's substantial support for pay as you throw in, in town based on the Vision 2020 annual survey. Uh, last year and this year, as it says up there. Uh, town meeting requested uh, the town manager to come up with a plan two years ago, which he did last year and reported to us. Last year, town meeting uh, requested selectmen to consider pay as you throw as part of the uh, uh, long-range plan. Um, last slide. So to repeat what's been already said, pay as you throw is a program that is good for the environment, is consistent with our status as a green community. It allows households to control the, the, their trash disposal costs, and it, can treat, and it creates a new revenue stream. Uh, Page with throw has been successful in other communities, <clears throat> and we have a plan that's tailored for Arlington. <clears throat> what does the no action vote of the Board of Selection mean? I think it means that they properly put the override question first and could find no way to consider pay as you throw. 
Of course, they could not do it justice in the hour before this town meeting, this town meeting today. But, but no action does not have to be our final word. We ask you to strongly support the resolution which asks the Board of Selectmen to implement pay as you throw as soon as practical. What does this mean? As you will soon hear, the Finance Committee has voted to use any pay as you throw revenue uh, not approved by the, the uh, voters to reduce taxes. Consistent with that, the Board of Selectmen may consider asking the voters to approve pay as you throw by a referendum uh, question next April. <clears throat> with, with the revenue neutral proviso. Our vote tonight will encourage them to do that. If you have any questions, we'll try to answer them. And if you want a detailed written uh, uh, report, you can find it on the uh, Recycling Committee the part of the town's website. Thank you, sir. Um, do we have a second from Mr. Second. Howard? Thank you. Um, Ms. Warden? Patricia Warden, Precinct 8. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator, can I have permission for a resident of the town, Mr. William Eikamp, to address the meeting? He can address the meeting by right. He just has to be a resident. Mr. Eikamp, come forward. Uh, while Mr. Eikamp is coming downstairs, um, I'd like to make a few remarks. Um, please re vote no on the resolution. There is no specific plan in the, res in the resolution before us. Some of the plans being considered are bad. As a scientist, I have to tell you that environmentally, some of them are very bad. However, peers you throw can certainly be a cash cow for the selectmen's funds forever, if that's what the selectmen want, regardless of whether whatever plan they select the selectmen choose for the town is environmentally responsible and is a good plan. Um, so that if you vote yes, it simply means that um, the selectmen can say to your constituents when they, when they implement whatever plan um, that the town meeting made us do it. In other words, you will have given the selectmen a carte blanche. Mr. Eikamp. Mr. Eikamp, name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Bill Eikamp, Precinct 8, 246 Pleasant Street for 42 years and two days. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. About six years ago, I was on the original Page You Throw Committee, and I found it to be a fascinating group of people, a very enjoyable duty. Unfortunately, sometimes when you're on a group like that, the facts led me a different place than they led other people on the committee. Nonetheless, even though I am known not to be in favor of this, I am very thankful to Peter Howard for being generous with sharing the facts. Uh, he's given me data, and I want to tell you just very briefly what something about what the data show. The bags that are proposed are $2 a piece, and the, the uh, pay-as-you-throw spreadsheet estimates that you will be able to put average 20 pounds in those bags. So you will be paying 10 cents a pound to have your trash hauled. The tipping cost to the town for that is about 3.4 cents a pound, and the hauling cost, while not accurately knowable, is about 4.3 cents a pound. So, as the best estimate I can get from the facts, it's going to cost the town 7.7 cents to get rid of your trash, for which you're paying 10. This turns trash into a profit center, not a loss center. For recycle, if I take a pound of trash out of my trash bag and put it in my recycle bag, I save 10 cents. But the town still has to pay 4.3 cents to have that haul to the recycle. So the town is losing 10 cents in revenue and incurring 4.3 cents in cost. Now, I have an interest to reduce my trash and I have an interest to re increase my recycle. The town does not. 
and good managers don't spend their time raising their costs and lowering their revenues. So recycle and trash reduction will become a grassroots movement completely. It will be up to us. I've asked before how anybody reduces their trash, and I don't know, but it's going to be up to us to find out. Um, one other quick item, after biking around East Arlington on Trash Collection Eve, I noticed that not too many people trash are in neat, tidy packets of 20 pounds each. So I think you should be aware that uh, many of us are going to have a new hobby, and that is how to fit our trash into the town supply bag. One final thing on which I have no special information whatsoever, and all of you are better judges of this than I am. This uh, program, according to the spreadsheet, will add between 2.6 and 2.3 million dollars a year in costs to the town residents. How the voters who just voted a 6.5 million dollar override will respond to that is something you will be a better judge of than I. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Tom Fitzgerald, Precinct 11, uh, Town of Arlington, 57 years, 360, 336 days, and uh, wait a minute, let me check. 15 hours and 49 minutes. Um, but folks, yeah, start the clock. Oh, no, that's, oh, that's yeah. plenty for me. I never use the 10 minutes anyway. Don't worry about it. Don't bother, John. You've done enough tonight. Um, I need the help tonight, believe me. Yeah. I, I would just have to say that uh, anybody that knows me, I'm a pretty talkative, friendly guy around town, so a lot of people are aware that I'm a town meeting member and let me know how they feel. And based on the people that talked to me, I was kind of surprised that the override passed to begin with. But you know there's 47% of the people in this town that aren't happy right now. And a decent percentage of those are senior citizens who are struggling emotionally as to how they're going to be able to pay their additional taxes to begin with. Um, the fact that we would even consider to take an additional one and a half to two million dollars <throat> out of the pockets of the people of Arlington shocks me. And I, I, will get, I talked to a contractor today who's replacing the roof of my house. Um, and some other siding work that's going to cost me around $15,000. I'm going to be paying $45,000 for Curry College next year. And if this continues, I also will be living in a, a small two-bedroom home in Woburn and wishing everyone in Arlington the best. So I, I, would, I would recommend that we stop the nonsense. We, we saved the schools, we saved the town, we gave them six and a half million dollars. Let's not give them another two million now on, on the pockets of our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Martin, I believe you had a, a, an amendment. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, John Warden, Precinct 8. Yes, I do, and I, I will get to it um, <coughs> momentarily uh, with your leave. Um, um, the last time we had the um, pay-as-you-throw, that, at that point it was called, uh, if I recall correctly, the, the trash fee. Um, it was used as kind of a bogeyman to um, um, uh, uh, encourage people to support an override. And, and after the override passed, uh, and the article for, for the trash fee came up, Mr. Tosti, uh, Chairman of the Finance Committee, um, uh, came up and, and moved no action on it. And he had a little, a little poem, uh, not quite an epic poem, but it was fairly long. And, and I, I can't remember, all the, but I think the first line was, uh, alas, poor trash fee, we knew him well. And, and he went on to, 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 to you know, kind of, uh, we you know we came not to uh, not, not not to praise trash fee, but to bury him. 
Uh, and <coughs> so <coughs> um, maybe he'll do that again tonight. Uh, the, the, the override is, has been mentioned, and I, I, I voted for the override, uh, the $6.5 million increase. But I, I, I submit uh, to you, uh, town meeting members and fellow citizens, that maybe one tax increase is enough, at least for this week. Um, <laughs> now, I've been, I, I, I have been, um, I, I have been uh, recycling since uh, probably since before some of you were born. And in the old days, it wasn't as easy as now. All we do is now is put everything we can think of except our garbage that used to go to the pigs, as was pointed out. Um, uh, we put it in the blue things. And, 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 but in the old days, if you wanted to you know, be zealous about this, you had to flatten your tin cans and, and take them to the town yard. And you could bundle up your newspapers and take them to the town yard. And, and um, I remember my, uh, my, my children, we'd throw all the tin cans into a, a box and then my children would say, Daddy, can we go down and flatten tin cans? And we'd take a sledgehammer and flatten the tin cans. And I got kind of tired of it after a while. Um, but um, uh, so, you know, recycling is a great thing. Uh, we should recycle. Uh, and, and as the lady pointed out, the problem with our trash nowadays is that almost everything comes in excess packaging. And I, I was thinking particularly my grandson, one of my grandson's birthdays was uh, last weekend and somebody gave him a, some kind of a truck. My goodness, he needed a hatchet, a screwdriver, a knife and all kinds of stuff just to get the thing out of the package. And then you had this big chunk of plastic and a big chunk of cardboard. I hope it went into the recycling bin. Um, but we can't solve that in Arlington. Uh, we can't solve it in Massachusetts. It's a national problem, and, and if Congress had the stomach for it, they would get after the excess packaging from all this cheap stuff that we bring from China. Um, now, Arlington uh, has a reputation as a green community. Uh, fine, but I, I, I submit to you that no green community would encourage the production of thousands and thousands of plastic bags every year. Um, the uh, plastic bags, you know what they're made out of? They're made out of oil. And oil, as you know, is very cheap and the supply is inexhaustible, right? <laughs> <coughs> okay, so we're going we're gonna to use all these plastic bags and, and we're going to uh, burn them in incinerators and send all kinds of nasty stuff up into the air we breathe. Uh, and, and, uh, and I don't think that's being very green, at least my, my, my uh, opinion. Um, the, um, now, uh, I, I don't use plastic bags, just personal inclination. We may use a, a few of them, but, but not, not, not very many. We use barrels. And I, I found by experience, and I've been putting my stuff on the curb in, in, in Arlington for, um, uh, for, for more than 40 years, uh, and um, um, I find that a barrel will last about 10 years before the trash men manage to break it up. I'm sure you've all experienced some of that. Um, now, 10 years, one barrel. 10 years, 520 plastic bags. Now imagine how much oil that takes, how much stuff that's putting into the, in, in, into the environment. Um, so uh, I'm sure that we can all afford another $2 a week or whatever to to uh, on top of our tax bill, on top of our override, uh, but 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 I think the the the, the issue is uh, really that that if you're environmentally thoughtful enough to use barrels instead of bags, you shouldn't have to um, buy bags uh, uh, from the town or from the town's uh, agents. And I, I I was pleased to see that the uh, the selectmen voted no action on this. Um, and I would, um, um, I, I would like to, uh, at this point, offer an amendment, and I will, um, I will bring it up and give it to the moderator. I would, I, I would like to move that. Now, I, it was on the, uh, I guess it's, it's up there. 
And there were some copies in the back, and it was on uh, the uh, town meeting list, sir. But let me read it. Uh, I move the following amendment to the resolution offered by Mr. Howard under Article 34. In the last paragraph, strike out the words as soon as practicable and insert in place there of the words when, as, and if the same is approved by a majority of voters in a general town election. So I think uh, the, the, the voters have approved an override. If they want to approve at this point or as soon as practical, whenever that is, uh, I think we ought to put it to the people because this is, let's not, as the gentleman pointed out, this is a $2 million additional tax that's being imposed on the householders of this town. And I think at minimum, the people ought to have a vote for it. So I hope you'll support my uh, amendment to the resolution. And then vote the resolution down. Thank you. I hear a second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dunn. resident of the town she has a right to sp speak she's right here we should go get up Charlotte name and address for the record please thank you 
Good evening, my name is Charlotte Milan. I live at 19 Bellevue Road. I'm here tonight as co-chair of Vision 2020's Sustainable Arlington. We've prepared this statement. Municipal solid waste generation, collection, and disposal negatively impact the environment in numerous ways by contributing to local air and water pollution and to the emissions of, of gas, greenhouse gases that cause global climate change. These environmental impacts occur along the entire life cycle of the products we buy, use, and eventually discard. Thus reducing the municipal solid waste will create environmental benefits beyond those directly associated with its collection and disposal. As such, Vision 2020 Sustainable Arlington strongly supports efforts by the town to implement pay as you throw, reducing the total volume of municipal solid waste produced, increasing participation in recycling programs and increasing the percentage of waste that is recycled, um, increasing the use of backyard composting as a means of reducing waste and reducing the use of fossil fuel based fertilizers, and, promo and especially promoting behavior changes among town residents and businesses that result in less waste being produced in the first place. As we saw in the slides uh, presented, there has been significant reduction of solid waste generated that cannot be explained simply by the increase in recycling. There's other behavior changes that are possible with the implementation of a pay-as-you-throw program. For these and all the reasons um, stated by the presentation, um, Vision 2020 Stanford Arlington strongly supports a pay-as-you-throw implementation program. And thank you for allowing me to speak today. Thank you, Ms. Mullian. Mr. Jameson. Uh, Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12, and co-chair of the Arlington Recycling Committee. And apparently someone who will beat his head against the wall numerous times. Um, I have a couple personal remarks uh, looking forward um, to the financial aspects and, the, and as well as the pay to throw, through throw aspects. Um, yes, uh, tomorrow I was happy to learn while um, helping my father through a surgery this morning, um, which went well. That the pay to throw uh, that the override passed last night. Um, Mr. Mr. Dunn, Suckman Dunn, I believe, was quoted uh, in the paper in one of the publications, the press, uh, that okay, we now again have a period of stability during which we can work towards savings in healthcare, efficiency. Several articles of which we passed this meeting, which may help in that regard. And I, one who you know looks at the numbers, have been very impressed with the. Um, things the manager and his staff and the superintendent and the schools have done over the past five or six years to be, make this town more efficient and cost effective. But once again in the future we will face um, extremely tight financial situation like we did um, this spring going into this coming year. Something we never talk about when we cut budgets and personnel is our value system. We don't get to talk about that much here at town meeting as far as how we spend our money. We get budgets, we approve them yes or no, and we question them. Sometimes we question the $25, sometimes we question the millions. But I hear uh, time and time again, here from the floor, from the people on my right, members of the school committee, the superintendent, the town manager, how much we value our direct employees that provide the services that we so cherish that make people vote for an override here um, in town and for us to vote for things that we think will make the town better here on the floor of town meeting. Um, we never talk about the fact that whenever we've made cuts in the past, we've made a choice. Mr. Dunn uh, remarks that people are passionate about their choice. Unfortunately, we consider, have, in my experience in this town and on town meeting, we have considered trash to be more important than those employees that we so cherish and value their services. services. So in the future, and I'm not saying some people have alluded that we're doing this now, we're not doing this now. This is something in the future. This resolution provides the Board of Selectmen, perhaps on the, on the, on, in the context Mr. Dunn spoke to, perhaps not. And I would speak again to Mr. Warden's uh, amendment strongly, because um, that ties the context of the ability to have an extra financial arrow in your financial quiver. And we need as many as we uh, can have, uh, notwithstanding the passing of the override. 
Um, this is the represent. Uh, so, so I uh, would hope that you would vote in favor of this. Looking forward, this is not going to happen instantaneously, as Mr. Dunn said. This is a process that we're going to go through. I think we should support the process going forward as we have in the past. Um, the next thing I want to point out is we are a representative body. Two years running, 65% of our constituents, based upon the Vision 2020 survey, have voted yes. Survey says, pay as you throw. A gentleman talked earlier about the cost. He thought the margin for the town was quite large. Actually, it's not. You can't charge more than the margin. I believe that's something in Massachusetts general law or something. Um, the cost to dispose of a bag, the large bag, and transport it to North Andover is $2, maybe more than $2. So there you go. So, where am I? Okay, so my other job tonight, as part of the um, presentation group, so was to tell you a few things that the uh, other presentation did not get to. So other than saying I hope that you'll support this so we can move forward, perhaps in the context as Mr. Dunn said, but without the ties, the, the hands of the Board of Selectmen overtly tied through Mr. Warden's uh, resolution. Can I have the first slide of the extras, please? The backup. Should say backups or backup. There we go. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yes. First off, we already have a pay as you throw plan in town. You may see orange bags out on Friday on Mass Ave. Commercial uh, institutions in town who wish who don't aren't required like food places to have a dumpster can, can avail themselves of the town trial searches for a price of two dollars and thirty five cents a bag. They would actually be saving money. This would make the plan uh, unitized and mesh them within uh, both the residential and the business. Um, it was mentioned earlier that you would purchase the bags in local establishments. Our select people are very keen on growing our business economy, and this would keep you in town when you were looking for those bags. You wouldn't be going to, to Home Depot or Costco. You'd be going right here to Wanamaker, Shattuck, uh, Johnny's, and things like that. You only pay for the trash that you produce. And you're not paying for the disposal of trash that someone might bring in from a construction site or a place they rent in another town or the Cape. Next slide, please. Ms. Dan could regale you with experiences statewide about illegal dumping. It doesn't increase. We have some now. We have some later. Not anymore. If we find illegal dumping, it's dealt with the, way, the best way to do this. People deal with this in the first month or two. There's money from a state grant, as you'll see in a second, that can help pay for that. You open the bag. Unless you've sanitized your trash from your names, you're going to find out who it is. You publicize who did it. And it goes away. Next, please. It's also illegal to not um, dispose of your trash correctly. The Board of Health can, can enforce this action if need be because your trash won't be picked up if it's not in the bag and you can't just leave trash on the curb. That's against the bylaws. Next slide, please. Uh, you get five bucks per person the first year. That's about $100,000 for the town of Arlington to help uh, set this up. This is uh, for those of you who are worried about the state money not coming our way. This is in a special fund dedicated to this purpose. They can't take it away to us from us once we uh, move to enact pay as you throw. Several of the people in the finance committee were quite impressed by that. That was, I remember one comment, someone said, that's reason enough for me to vote. I think a gentleman behind me said that. Three minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, a previous speaker has talked about plastic bags. Next slide, please. Yep, there'll be a lot of plastic bags. There already are a heck of a lot of plastic bags. It's just a different bag, a different color, you buy one that fits your needs, they go up in rolls of 10, you set them on a curb or in the barrel, it's really no different. Go down your street. There's plastic bags everywhere. You're just switching out one bag for the other. The bag is less than 0.5%. That's 0 0.005 times the weight of the bag. Stickers don't work. Polyethylene burns really well. And guess what? We also don't talk about the fact that the North Andover plant, that people talked against earlier in this session today, 
actually is a trash energy program. Okay, so we're actually, rather than letting our trash rot in the ground and produce methane, it's being burned and produce CO2. And those of you familiar with global warming know that methane is many times more uh, productive in producing global warming than carbon dioxide. So we'd better have carbon dioxide than methane. There's no additional administration required. The people who buy and sell the bags and distribute them take care of all that. They do all the processing of the funds. They send the town a check. Next, please. And last but not least, is it a tax or is it a utility fee? Okay? All of us pay a water bill. Some of us don't want to talk about water bills right now, but all of us pay a water bill. That is a fee, it's not a tax. You don't get, it's not part of your tax bill except the part that we've, the capital part that's in our taxes, which is confusing, but. Um, it, it, it's like your gas bill or your electric bill or whatever, okay? You pay for the amount of service that you use and you pay no more. You're not paying for your neighbor who has three bags out and you only have one or you have a bag every other week. You pay for just what you have, which I think is a very New England thing personally. And as Carolyn mentioned, two thirds, or a large number, a hundred and some odd, actually have pay as you throw programs. I and two thirds of the community in Massachusetts already have some type of fee be it a dump fee or a pay-as-you-throw fee or a collection, a flat fee, have a fee for trash. We don't, okay? So I'll go back to my first, my first thought. Okay, looking forward from a philosophical thing, like Mr. Dunn said, this is something that's right. We need to move forward. We need to say that we support moving forward. How that's done will be gone through the process that he talked about. And we need to think about what happens three or four years from now when, when the override and the current financial plan and stability goes away. And we have to make that hard choice Time's up, Mr. James. between direct employees and trash. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Mr. McCory, you're next. Uh, Hugh McCrory, Precinct 20. Um, I respect what the Arlington Recycling Committee are doing, what they're trying to do, um, and the work they've done probably over a number of years from what I understand. Um, I don't agree with it, um, and I'll give you a few reasons why I don't agree with it and why I'm I've volunteered to speak. Um, I consider my ourselves a, a normal family. We recycle as much as we can. So effectively, I consider us to be 100% recyclers. I don't understand why we would want to bring in something like pay as you throw, and why would we inconvenience, expense, and penalize, essentially, recyclers because of the behavior of some, some of our neighbors who choose not to recycle. Um, I know from a personal experience, well, on our street, for example, many people recycle. Most people do. And most families I know also uh, recycle. Some don't, and it only dawned on me this year that I've been living there for seven years, and some of my neighbors have never put out a recycle bin. We have to ask ourselves why. Why have they not done that? Maybe it's expense. I don't know the answer to that. Maybe the ex experts on the uh, recycling committee can answer that. So wh why not ensure every household has a recycling bin? Um, why not try to educate people to do this? Uh, why penalize? people who recycle with, because of the behavior of people who don't recycle. Um, the previous speaker said uh, the bags are a different color, but he, I think he neglected to say the uh, plastic bags are a different cost as well. Uh, previous speakers have mentioned the override. Uh, this pays you throw might be the right thing, might be right, but it's, it's not right now. N now is not the time for pays you throw. Uh, I would support it going forward, but I would like to hear more about how it's going to be implemented. I haven't, I get the sense that people think recycling equals pays you through. My, my opinion, it doesn't. There's people who already recycle at 100% and we don't have pays you through. I think it's the wrong tool. Um, so. 
I would like to see it considered in the future. I would like to see it discussed better in the future. Uh, I don't, I th and I, I do believe it's, a, it's an indirect tax. Uh, I was against it before we passed the override, and I'm still against it. I haven't heard anything to convince me that we should support pays you through. So uh, thank you very much, and I would be urging at this time, tonight, this week, not to support uh, uh, the article, um, but uh, thank you. Mr. Trosty. Very briefly, the finance, just wanted to let you know the Finance Committee took a position about two weeks ago uh, in a discussion in general terms of pay as you throw uh, and uh, established their policy or our policy that uh, we would not support a revenue producing pay as you throw without a vote of the people. Uh, so in that consideration, I suppose we would, uh, our policy would support Mr. Warden's amendment. Uh, if the Board of Selectmen put together a revenue neutral page and throw, I think that would be another issue. Uh, but that would be the position of the Finance Committee going forward, that uh, before we institute a page and throw that produces revenue, the people should have, that should be a valid question for the people to decide. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Wagner. and all associated matters. Thank you. We have, we have a motion to terminate debate. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. Debate is terminated. We have before us three things. One, the selectmen's vote for no action. Two, Mr. Howard's motion for the resolution. And three, Mr. Warden's amendment to Mr. Howard's resolution. So we're actually going to take them in the reverse order. First, we're going to do Mr. Howard's amendment to the resolution. Mr. Warden's. Mr. Warden's amendment to Mr. Howard's resolution. Then Mr. Howard's. And depending upon that, the final vote will be whatever transpires. So, all in favor of Mr. Warden's resolution. Amendment to the resolution, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. My opinion, that is an affirmative vote. The resolution is so amended. Now, we now have before us Mr. Howard's resolution as amended. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. My opinion, that is defeated. We now have before us the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen for no action. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. My opinion, we move no action on Article 34. We have now before us Article 35. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article 35, the selectmen voted no action. Anyone wish to address it? Nope. Recommend a vote of no action. Please, all in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Say no. It's a unanimous vote for no action. That now brings us to Article 54. Brian? Yep, Mr. Toss. I have one. I have one. Okay. As uh, many you are aware, uh, for the past uh, several years, we've had protracted negotiations over the issue of health care with our employee groups. And I'm pleased to report that uh, we've reached a breakthrough, and we now have uh, agreements with three of our unions in the vendor community, and we continue to work with the uh, rest of the groups. We'll provide for some significant savings in health care costs. Uh, you have a memorandum I submitted that uh, summarizes the agreements. Uh, the agreements are with the uh, Teachers Union, the ADA. It's with the uh, Service uh, Employees International Union, SEIU, and the Professional Librarians, those three unions. Uh, what's before you tonight is just the two town unions, the SEIU and the Professional Librarians. Uh, basically, on the uh, health care changes, uh, what's being proposed is an increase in contributions 
uh, by the employees towards those costs. We basically have uh, two HMO plans, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, which is our more expensive plan. Currently, employees contribute 15% of the cost for those plans. Uh, this agreement calls for that 15% to go up to 25% for that plan. The other plan that we have is uh, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, currently at 15%, and the proposal is to go to 20% for that less expensive plan. Uh, once adopted by all the employee groups, we estimate that the savings in FY12 will be approximately $1.3 million. In subsequent years, the, those savings uh, will grow. Uh, in return for that, um, the proposed wage increases uh, call for 0% in FY10. And in the last day of fiscal FY2011, there'll be 2%. So effectively, uh, the employees will be going without a raise for two years, both FY10 and 11. So that 2% really will be uh, coming into effect in FY12. And in those negotiations, we did leave open the option for the town to take advantage of any healthcare changes that may be authorized to implement under the new legislation being debated by the legislature right now. Uh, as you may have heard, both the House and the Senate have adopted uh, changes that would give significant authority to cities and towns to implement health care changes uh, without going through collective bargaining. And I anticipate we will be able to make further changes later in fiscal 12. Um, so those are the uh, uh, agreements that we've reached today. Hopefully uh, we'll be reaching further agreements down the road, but I think that's all that we have available. For this town meeting, you have before you the proposed vote, and I would recommend uh, favorable action on that. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tosti? The Finance Committee strongly supports the collective bargaining agreements before you. We think are in many cases these are breakthrough agreements. Uh, we believe that the health insurance changes in these agreements will help tremendously in bringing these costs under greater control. Not total control, but much greater control. Uh, the increases that you see here, the $106,000, will be uh, paid for with reductions in the health insurance budget when we get to Article 56. But again, we strongly recommend uh, these agreements to you. Uh, they will be uh, tremendous help to the town down the road. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Judd. Well, I'm in Judd Precinct 9. I believe that the citizens just voted some $6 million more. I understood that because, at least up to this point, most of the employee unions wanted nothing to do with the GIC, I was told that that was costing us about $5 million a year. So it sounds to me like uh, we're going to have maybe an extra million or so to play with. I think the other thing about any kind of pay to whatever is you're going to add administrative expenses, whether it's pay every time you call 911, or whatever it may be, but the point I'm trying to get at is I would like to see a little more clarity on these figures, particularly, I believe, Wait Mr. Tosti just said $100,000. Now, where did this $5 million come from before? Uh, people just feeding us numbers out of the air, or are we supposed to accept what they say as gospel? I would like some clarification, because I can remember, too, when we used to have a huge public works department, we're Mr. Tosti, can you answer his question? Mr. Judge, you're going way off the issue of collective Mike. bargaining. Mr. Tosti, can you answer his question about the $5 million? If the, you even said that, I don't know, you, you were the first one who said that, I think. The, uh, there's a couple of different issues here. Um, this, uh, we have the collective bargaining agreement, which so far have been settled with the Arlington Education Association and with the two unions that see before us. Uh, those will be the 2% raises, which will be paid for reductions with the health insurance budget. Uh, this year, for, fi or for fiscal 2012, 
because the raises are for a whole year and the cost savings are for only about seven months, we'll probably break even for fiscal 2012. After, in 2013, though, there will be substantial changes, savings in that. Now, uh, as far as the GIC is concerned, we can't do anything until the legislature passes something, uh, in which case we don't even know if it will affect 2012. Uh, because it might not allow us to enter the GIC or make those changes for a while. But I think that uh, if that happens, the selectmen have already put into this override a million dollars in savings from those costs, from, from those legislation if it passes. Uh, so those have already been taken account into at least into a million dollars here. And I think they've already also made the commitment that if there are additional savings up and beyond that, that will help extend the three-year promise uh, into a four-year promise or maybe even a longer promise. So there's a couple of different things going on there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. I would like to say, too, that I would like to congratulate and thank the various municipal employee unions for taking a little bit of the strain that's being put on the town's budgets. They must be able to pull in their belt a little bit, too. And I'm glad that they are doing so. I just hate to see all of this loaded onto the taxpayer. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I didn't write the person's whole name down. I'll figure it out. Mr. Bear, you can go until I figure out who that was. All Bear, Precinct 13, move the question on all that. Okay. Mr. McKay, there's a motion to terminate debate. free cash, uh, and I think that uh, that language needs to be specific, and it is not. Thank you. I'll ask Ms. Rice. Is this language sufficient, Ms. Rice? Okay, Mr. Sullivan. Raise means raise through taxation. Okay, so we have motion to terminate debate. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. Debate hereby is terminated. We have before us the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen as presented by Mr. Sullivan this evening on Article 54. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. It is a vote, and I so declare it. Affirmative. That brings us to 9.30. We're going to take a 10-minute break, then we're going to come back and do the budgets. Um, Article 56, we're going to address that right as soon as we come back. We'll see you in 10 minutes.
Come to order. Mr. Tosti, did you have um, something to tell us? Please come to order. Mr. Tosti has the floor. Please come in and take your seats. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have Mr. Tosti um, introduce, withdraw the old budgets. There were pre override, introduced new budgets. Three to nothing Bruins, almost the end of the second quarter, the end of the second, five minutes into second, 3-0 Bruins. Then, then what we're going to do after Mr. Tosti's done is we're going to go through like we have in the past several years and hold those budgets people wish to talk about. And then at the end we'll vote the budgets as a whole in, in one swift vote. Mr. Tosti? Finance Committee vote, budget. I am going to move to withdraw the budget that is in the original Finance Committee report and substitute the budget which is was on your chairs today. Okay, that's seconded. Let's just take a vote on that right now. All in favor of withdrawing the old budget and substituting the new budget, which is labeled Appendix B, which you got today, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. Okay, the new budget is so substituted. Now, last week, we mailed, the Finance Committee mailed to all the town meeting members a two-pager back-to-back, which includes all the override, for want of a better term, putbacks. Um, and what you will see is the difference in this book, with one or two exceptions, matches the putbacks that are listed in the uh, uh, mailing that we sent to you last week. So you can see what would have happened, you know, if the override passed. Uh, and those are now in this book. Now, there are a couple of differences because of the collective bargaining. So you will see in the education budget, and you will see in the health insurance budget, that those changes are greater than the putbacks here because of the collective bargaining. In other words, the collective bargaining has come out of the health insurance budget and go into the collective bargaining article, which we just voted on, and into the school budget to pay for that 2% for next year. And they all came out of the health insurance budget. But otherwise, you'll go down and see $475 restored to FinCom. There's the override add backs to $475. So you can see those as you go down. Now, um, before I would like to do one, uh, say one thing, I'd like to thank very much, um, uh, especially two people, Alan Jones, our vice chair of the committee, who ferociously worked on this for the last 24 hours to make sure it was set, and Adam Champlain, the deputy town manager, for working with him to get all this set up so it could be before you tonight. So. <laughs> that's instead of a raise. Uh, <laughs> so this is what, what gave you the notes. Now, I think uh, here we include the fiscal 2011, as voted by this town meeting last, a year ago. We include the 2012, that's from the original, that's from this book that was given to you in April. And then the 2012 override with the add backs, which in all the cases will be identical to the mailing, uh, with the exception of the education and the health insurance, which also had to include the savings to pay for the uh, collective bargaining agreements. 
Um, I think I, I, I put my email down in the, ma in the mailing and I didn't get any questions. So I'm sure all this is, is uh, uh, hopefully clear to you and we'll be ready to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. So Mr. Tossi, so I understand we're actually voting on the column that says 2012 override. That That's the numbers we're voting for. Do you all understand that? Okay. So we're going to go through. We're going to go through um, each of the budgets. If someone wants to discuss it, please yell hold, and I'll mark it down. Then we'll go back and discuss those budgets. Finance committee budget. Okay. Um, board of selectmen budget. Hold. Town manager budget. Let me ask you something, Mr. Judd. Are you going to hold every budget? No. Okay. Uh, personnel. Hold. Information technology. That's good. Comptroller. Good. Treasurer collector. Good. Po postage. Good. <laughs> Board of Assessors. That's good. Legal. That's good. Town Clerk. That's good. You're, you're safe, Stephanie. <laughs> Board of Registrars. Good. Parking. Good. Planning and Community Development. Old. That's it, Carol. <laughs> Redevelopment Board. Good. Zoning Board of Appeals. Good. Public Works. Oh. Oh. Community Safety. Inspections, good. Hold. Education, hold. hold. Libraries, hold. hold. <coughs> Health and Human Services, hold. hold. Retirement, retirement's good. Insurance, hold. hold. Reserve fund. Let's see. Water and sewer. Recreation. Good. Veterans Memorial Rink. And get near the end. Council on Aging. Transport, Council on Aging Transportation, I'm sorry. Good. And Youth Services Division. That's good. And, and there's the summaries. Okay. So the first one someone had a hold on was Board of Selectmen. Who wants to discuss Board of Selectmen? Mr. Judd. Watch out, Ed, he's going to barrel you over. Lyman Job Precinct 9. My main reason for uh, wanting to get into this budget at all is I'm glad to see that the budget apparently of 2012 is going to be less. Excuse me, I'm glad to see that the 2012 FY budget is going to be somewhat less than the FY 2011. I'm just wondering if this includes, as it should, the cost of the elections, because the board of selectmen are responsible for setting up the voting places and etc. and hiring the workers. So I would just like to see if uh, 
This is, that has been brought into consideration. See, is we've had a special election this year, which was not originally planned, I don't think. And we will have, I believe next year, we will have a federal primary, a town election, a state primary, and a federal uh, election. So that comes up to about four elections, and that's not including anything else that may come up. So I'm just hoping that that's been factored in the past. I think this is the time to progress. Would you like this? Would you like this? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That clears that up. Uh, the next budget would be the same thing. We we would, yeah. the we're we're talking pay, about selectmen now. Yes. Yeah. And I, hope, I would hope that if the unions are going to take a pay cut or at least no increase, I hope that our administrative people are in the same position. Everybody should share the misery. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to discuss the selectman's budget? Seeing none, the next budget that was held was town manager. I believe pass, okie dokie. Next budget held was personnel. Mr. Wagner. Thank you, Mr. didn't vote for the override, one of the things that they are frustrated about, I believe, and maybe we all are, is the potential for um, waste and, and extra money being spent by the town. So I hope I can ask this question without offending anybody, but uh, specifically people are asking me, for example, what does in the town manager's office, what does a deputy town manager do? And um, is, is the remuneration for that position, is that commensurate with what we have in other towns around us? Mr. Sullivan, would you like to tell us what Mr. Chaperlain does? <laughs> uh, yes, among the uh, many uh, responsibilities for the deputy's position, uh, the primary responsibility is budgetary and monitoring budgets during the course of the year, putting the budgets together. It's kind of like our financial office. In addition, uh, just during the course of the year, there's a whole host of things uh, collected by him. He sits off at the uh, table and all negotiations, so there's a host of uh, duties for that position. And uh, I would say the compensation here is probably lower than most of the size. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, well, I did notice that um, uh, in the high-paid positions, or relative to me, high-paid positions in the town, uh, there are not raises. And in fact, in that position, there is a reduction, I believe. So I thank you for working through that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Deist? Sir, anyone else wish to discuss the manager's budget? Okay, the next budget that was held is personnel. Sir, Mr. McCory. Uh, Hugh McCory, uh, Precinct 20. Um, just also, I just want to ask a couple of questions, quick questions uh, with regards uh, <coughs> to the personnel budget and also with great respect to our town employees and uh, town uh, management. Uh, I just, I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm looking at this from the, trying to be from the perspective of someone who voted no. I actually campaigned uh, for the override, but I'm looking at this, uh, I'm just seeing a large percentage increases in budgets for, from going from 2011 to 2012. There may be valid reasons, but can, I'd like to understand why uh, there are such double digit uh, increases. Um. In the case of the uh, personnel budget, uh, they are responsible for implementing, uh, among the many 
benefit programs here is the health care. And as, as you all know, health care is a big issue. Uh, we are implementing a number of changes as a result of the contribution changes that I referred to earlier this year. But in addition, uh, sometime during the course of FY12, we're going to be able to implement the legislation that the legislature is currently working on. That will result in either us going into the GIC or implement, implementing significant plan design changes. Uh, either of those will require a considerable amount of work uh, in the uh, personnel office, as you can imagine. Uh, there's close to 2,000 people that are covered by our health insurance programs. About half of those are retirees. And you can imagine when we start talking about change in the health care for retirees, we're going to get thousands of calls about their coverages and what they're supposed to do. Uh, so this is just to gear up for all those questions and assistance that the uh, employees, retirees, and need during the course of the year. So that's why we've added a half-time position uh, in the benefits area to administer those programs. As I mentioned, those programs uh, are expected to uh, reap millions of dollars in savings. So adding uh, 20000 or so for a part-time position to help administer all those changes is, is well worth it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I also realize that it is a small dollar amount relative to the budget, but uh, it's just the uh, percentage uh, increases. Uh, so, thanks very much for the explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCord. Mr. Marquis, do you have a question? Ken <coughs> Marquis, um, most of you would present now, and now I would present 20. I was told it was still A-OK -okay to be part of town meeting for a temporary period of time. And what I want to talk about is what I would call a personal poll that I have been doing regarding the override, not a poll on paper, but just talking with people. Mr. Marquis? Yes? We're talking about the personnel department of the town right now, not your and my personal goals. Yeah, but people had been talking about the override, so I thought it was acceptable. To well, in relation to the budget we're discussing. This is in relation to the budget. Okay. But keep it in relation to the personnel department budget, if you can. I don't believe that very many people are very much in favor of the override. So many people think that it has a lot of supporters. I've talked to a lot of people who are seething at the well, idea. On, in relation to the override, the, the voters have spoken. That's and all I had. They are people who essentially hurt themselves well, because they unfortunately are so cynical about politics. Well, Mr. Marquis, Mr. Marquis, I'm going to have to ask you not to go down that path. All I have to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Mr. Tosti? Okay, anyone else wish to discuss personnel? Next budget that was held is number 14 planning and community development okay we have a few people uh, sir right here then um loretti mr fuller fisher okay chapit uh, thank you mr moderator roland chapit precinct 12. i'm sorry i i meant to ask to make a note on article five which is uh Budget five, which is information technology. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, if you have ask? a question on five. Go ahead. Yes. Oh, very quickly. Um, well, under the expense line, can someone tell me, perhaps, uh, someone from the school department, is that equipment that's purchased just for the town use, or is, is that part of that money also used to purchase computers and data processing equipment? within the school department. Mr. Good, who do you buy computers for? 
uh, the, the expense budget and the, uh, uh, the, this is my operating budget that you're looking at. The computers are bought out of uh, capital uh, accounts and they are separate. There's a school uh, uh, PC account and a uh, town PC account, but mainly what you're looking at here is operational costs. Okay. So these are two separate line items out of the capital equipment budget, not yes. here? Not here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Lavetti? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Chris Lavetti, uh, town meeting member, Precinct 7. We're back to uh, budget 14 and planning and community development. I have a few questions about what appears to be a new position called economic development coordinator and if I'm reading this right it looks like we will no longer have an assistant planning director but we'll have something called this economic development coordinator and I guess I would like to know um, a couple things about that one whether that's a full-time position what the responsibilities will be and why the decision was made to um, hire into that position instead of having an assistant planning director Ms. Kowalski suggest changes to our zoning to increase the business base in Arlington. And though that seems to be, at this time, more pressing than an assistant director. So is, is this a full-time permanent position then? Yes. Okay. Um, one other question related to the change, and this gets back to some of the statements that were made before we um, took a break from town meeting pertaining to the management of town-owned real estate. One of the functions of the uh, former assistant planning director was managing the leases, effectively working with the tenants of those properties. And I believe the town manager said something like the, the town currently lacks the skills to properly manage commercial real estate. If indeed we're not going to be rehiring into that position and not having anyone dealing with these properties, which collectively bring in about a million dollars a year to the town in rent, how is the town going to be managing those properties? I uh, just want to clarify why, while the uh, primary responsibilities for this position uh, would be economic development and the focus, um, 
they will be assuming some of the duties of the assistant director. And the ones that you mentioned, Chris, in terms of managing those properties, I envision uh, they are responsible for that. Uh, but again, the focus will be on economic development, thus the type of that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sirs. Uh, Mr. Fuller? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Fisher? Yeah. Mr. Trembley? Same individual? I don't know. Mr. Tosti might know. No, it is not. Uh, the former assistant director left the town for another position in another town, so this will be a new position, new person. Thank, Thank you. you. Mrs. Fiore? Precinct 2. Uh, I'm uh, concerned about the planning and community development budget only in the sense of the references of the Conservation Commission. I was on the Conservation Commission a few years ago for nine years, uh, chairman for three. And uh, if, unless things have changed, I recollect uh, that conservation commissions are autonomous. Uh, if a uh, city or town doesn't have a conservation commission, uh, the Board of Selectmen or whoever else runs the town has to act as the commission and they would have to go out on hearings and things when people, uh, you know, want to do something involving conservation issues. And uh, I noticed last year, and I see again this year, that the uh, Conservation Commission Administrator's uh, salary apparently uh, is in the Planning and Community Development Department and I want to know why the Conservation Commission doesn't have its own budget. The other thing in here that covers Conservation Commission talks about fees and fines account. It's not clear to me, and I may just not understand it, whether the 2000 and the, two, and the 4000 figure are monies that the town puts into the fees and fines account, or whether that shouldn't be fees and fines that are paid by people who come before the Commission. So I'd like a little bit of explanation of how the Conservation Commission got uh, absorbed into the Planning and Community Development Department. Mr. Toss, do you want to tackle that? Uh, this happened several years ago. Couldn't even be five or six years ago now. Uh, the conservation came uh, before us and needed, they wanted to increase uh, the hours of their Conservation Commission Administrator. Uh, and. Uh, I'm trying to remember all the reasons, but I think at that point we felt that a position of that level, in other words, not just a couple thousand dollars a year uh, working for a committee, but in effect a half-time, maybe even two-thirds time position, uh, should be within the department of the town and be administered. So for all intents and purposes, the Conservation Commission Administrator works under the authority of the Conservation Commission, but also works within the departments of the person has access to the computers and calculators and uh, copying machines and, and paper and stuff like that. Uh, and also the ability to work with other people in the office on similar type of projects. So it seemed like a reasonable place to put that position, but it does not take away any of the authority of the Conservation Commission to, uh, uh, to you know, for work from that person. What about the fees and fines? The negatives? It's right, and so uh, uh, one part of the promise was that uh, the Conservation Commission would uh, use some of the fees and fines account that they have. In other words, when they, uh, uh, when they do their work, uh, if you're coming before them for a permit, say you're the next to Alwife Broker or something like that, uh, you, uh, you pay a fee. And so the Conservation Commission agreed uh, because we were increasing the staff hours of that person substantially. They agreed to allocate a certain amount to offset some of the increased salary. Okay. Does that answer your question, Mrs. Fiore? Okay. Uh, Elsie Fiore, Precinct 2. Does the salary of the Conservation Commission Administrator, would that cover uh, any um, um, 
somebody that they needed to bring in. For instance, the name escapes me. You see my 50 years here. I've taken part of my mind away. Uh, you know, uh, consultants, I'm sorry. If they, if they had to hire a consultant on some project, would that money come out of this, uh, the uh, administrator's account, or how would they get money for that? Well, my understanding is that when uh, a developer puts forth a project which requires study outside of the expertise of the Conservation Commission members or administrators, uh, that the developer basically pays for that consultant. Uh, uh, Conservation Commission consultant. So that's that's how those are paid. Well, I hope that's true. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to discuss um, planning and community development? Okay. We're going to move on to the next one. 17, Public Works. Who wishes to speak to Public Works? Okay, Mr. Fisher. No, excuse me, Mr. Trembley. A lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering how many tons. Yeah. Um, you know, sir? Here we go. Uh, thank you, Mike. Lana Market, Director of Public Works. Uh, 8,447 tons. 8,447 tons. How much did we spend on that this year? Uh, uh, somewhere is about uh, $580,000. Oh, you got to break up the prices. Now, uh, is there any plans uh, afoot to use calcium chloride? Not currently, no. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin. Okay. Mr. Fiori. Mr. Fiori. Here's the mic, Peter. Okay. Peter Ferg, Precinct 2, why, why isn't recycling picked up every week? Why isn't recycling picked up? Because a lot of people don't put it out. Um, I don't know. Mr. Weidemacher, can you answer that? Maybe that's because it's not picked up every week. <laughs> well, I just want to know. I mean, the egg. If we want to charge it, why don't we do that? Uh, well, our current uh, collection contract does not include collection services for recycling every week. Uh, that was partially based on... Uh, at the time that the contract was written, the need for recycling pickup. We are currently looking at uh, renewing or uh, putting back out to bid the, the trash and recycling collection, and we will investigate the need for potential more frequent recycling. All right, thanks. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to discuss public works? Seeing none. That brings us to next year. Can you guys make this a little bigger? I'm going blind. I can hardly read it. Uh, community safety. We wanted to discuss community safety. Okay, hold. Go slow. So, Mr. Schlickman, Mr. Loretti. Go ahead, Mr. Schlickman. Rolly Chapman. Okay. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. My annual question. Uh, it appears that, uh, yeah, this is a small type. Uh, we have a 1.57% reduction in the line item for parking control officers. I'm sort of wondering allowed if uh, there, there's suddenly a, a lack of illegally parked cars in town. Um, uh, but the one thing I did ask last year, and I'm not looking at this year, is that we uh, itemize out what the parking fine revenues are in the town, and it's, it's not apparent. I'd like to ask that when we develop this document next year, we include that number, and I'm wondering if we have uh, anyone at this point who can state uh, where that number is this year vis-a-vis -vis last year. Okay, if there's two questions then. The first would be to Chief um, Ryan. Uh, is there a reason for the decrease in salaries for the parking control officers? Good evening, Mr. Moore, Frederick Ryan, Chief of Police. I believe that's uh, due to attrition, so a new employee would come in at a lower step in, in, the, uh, in the various steps in the pay grades. I, I was sort of hoping this uh, line item, which generates revenue, if there are indeed illegally parked cars on the street, would, would increase. 
Well, uh, this line item pays the salaries of the parking control officers, and it went down because of attrition. The newer employee makes less money. I, I'm thinking we should have more of these people out there working. He wants more of them. Well, that's that would be above my pay grade, I think, Mr. No. Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take as many employees as I, as I can get. I'd, lo I'd love to help because they, they, they seem to generate a lot more revenue than we pay them. Mr. Gilligan, do you know how much we get in parking fines and the year-to-year -year increase, decrease in that? Mr. Gilligan, is, as the treasurer, is the parking collect, ticket collector guy. Mr. Moderator, I, I didn't bring my 2011 finance book with me. It's in the book that's published every year. I'll be more than happy to go grab it in my office if, if Mr. Schuckman or the meeting would like. Um, Parking revenues fluctuate not only because of the number of illegal vehicles and violations, but the dollar amount of violations. That's why you, you would see fluctuations from year to year. That information is published in the town's annual financial report. I'll be more than happy to go grab it. It's on my desk, Mr. Moore. Mr. Schlickman, do you seem to do that? No, I, I'd love to see that because, I mean, the state has raised the fine for parking and bus stops to $100. So I'm hoping that might help. Oh, Brian knows it. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the manager has the book in front of him. $350,000. And how does that compare to last year? Uh, it's about the same. Okay. Thank uh, you, Mr. Sullivan. And if I could ask uh, a fire department question. Uh, the ad backs uh, for the fire department, given the, the debate on the Arlington list, uh, I just have to ask if the fire chief uh, believes these used to be necessary. The ad backs? The ad backs in the fire department because there was considerable opposition on the Arlington list coming out of the fire department, so I'm wondering if they actually need the people that are being added back. <laughs> chief? Fire chief, so fire chief, the ad backs are absolutely necessary. I'm understaffed as it is. I don't subscribe to the Arlington list. I don't know what's on there, so I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> um, Mr. Loretti. Thank you, Mr. Minor. Chris Loretti, Precinct 7 uh, Just one question on the police budget. And I'm looking at the numbers and parentheses for number of patrolmen. And it seems to have fluctuated over the past few years from uh, 43 to 44. But this year, with the override, it's up to 49. And I'm wondering if someone could explain that increase. Um, either Mr. Sullivan or Chief Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Frederick Ryan. Uh, you'll see a decrease in, in the number of ranking officers above that. And um, that's a management strategy and an attempt to control overtime. We're, we're trying to. Uh, uh, put bodies in the places where historically we've we've uh, spent more overtime. So you're re reducing senior staff to have more patrol officers. Is that the and have more patrol officers? Thereby, when there's vacancies, uh, uh, eliminate the uh, the need to backfill. Thank you. Okay, Andy, can we, Mr. Chapit? <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Roland Chapman, Precinct 12. Um, <laughs> I'm up here for the second time to ask this question. I hope I don't have to do it again. A couple of years ago, town meeting approved a significant amount of money in the capital equipment budget to upgrade the communications system that's inside the police department, the dispatcher positions. It became a state-of-the-art configuration. And I asked at the time, since we were paying for it, could we have a look? Well, either I missed the date that was held or it just got not done. And I'd like to ask through you, Mr. Moyer, uh, a comment from uh, the chief of police and or the fly chief. Can we go down for, for an hour and have a look and see what we're actually uh, benefiting from for this new state-of-the-art equipment. Chief Ryan, can Mr. Chapman have a tour? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Anyone else? Can I go and have a tour of the place? 
Uh, Frederick Ryan. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think we did invite the Capital Planning Committee uh, after the completion of the 911 Center, and we've we've uh, we did. And um, certainly, any member of town meeting is welcome um, uh, to view and tour the Community Safety Building, either through uh, contacting me or Chief Jefferson, and we're happy to accommodate that. Yeah, I'm just a lowly town meeting member, so I didn't get that invitation. But I think there are My apologies, here sir. who might like to go and have a look. Let's work together and we'll set a date. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Just don't call 911 to set it up. <laughs> Mr. McCoy? Hugh McCrory, Precinct 20. I uh, had a question for uh, Fire Chief Robert Jefferson. Um, just regarding the number of, em Mr. Moderator, uh, regarding the number of employees there are mm -hmm. currently in the, in the Fire Department, uh, pre and post um, override. Because I, I just find a discrepancy in, in some of the documents that I received from uh, one was a, well, I, I guess I'll let Mr. Jefferson yeah, I'll Mr. answer the question. Chief Jefferson. Uh, in this current fiscal year, fiscal year 11, uh, there were 75 personnel for the fire department, not including myself. I'm under administration, uh, Fred Ryan's budget. Currently, there's 70 employees on the job. With the override in the add backs, um, we're going to add back four bodies, bringing us up to 74. And then there was a strategy worked out where we would be able to pay for two additional firefighters from the um, ambulance revolving account due to the fact that we're running a second rescue more often bringing in more revenue so as opposed to bringing back five into the fiscal 12 budget they brought four back in for the regular process as you see in the budget there and then hoping to bring two additional firefighters back to the ambulance revolving account so I guess uh, maybe I missed it so the total number of employees not including yourself for the f fiscal year 2012 is is estimated at, at what exactly your total body 76 thank you uh, the other question I have and there's probably a, a perfectly good reason for this is uh, so we have the pre budget and the post budget override and I was just curious why uh, why there are fuel costs additional fuel budgets uh, uh, added into the budget now uh, when I, I, I understood that pre-budget we were just uh, we would be potentially losing personnel as opposed to um, craft. So I, I just wonder why there's a. I guess, Mr. Mother, I would ask. Uh, time uh, I'm not sure who I should ask. I'd ask you. I'm curious why we have additional fuel uh, budgets in uh, both the fire and the police, and uh, it's probably from my own uh, education. Gasoline and diesel. Yes, pre-budget okay. pre and uh, pre-override and post-override. No, it's simply that uh, in the meantime, we had uh, gone out to bid, uh, and when we knew all the bids, the bid yeah. prices came in high, so we had to help our budget. Okay, so it's, uh, okay, thank you. And, madam. Chief Ryan. Thank you, Frederick Ryan. Uh, historically, you'll notice we've spent um, in the area of 10% of our total appropriation on overtime, uh, historically. And that increase is just to reflect the actual spending year to year. Although you will see it doesn't amount to 10% of our total appropriation, we've taken other measures to control overtime. So uh, our goal is to bring it in less than 10 percent in fiscal 12. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Ms. Friedman. Any other? Anyone else wish to discuss this budget? Seeing none. The next budget that was held was education. Okay, let's start slowly back there in the corner. You can go first. 
And we have that guy. Lavalli, Mr. Lavalli. Berkowitz. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian, whenever you're ready. Brian Lavalli, Precinct 15. My question is, will we be restoring all 31 traffic supervisors given the fact that the override has passed? Thank you. Who can answer that? Ms. P Ms. Brody, Dr. Brody? Kathleen Brody, Superintendent. The answer is no. We will only be, we will only be restoring the traffic supervisors that we've had this year. And there were some partial posts, some full posts, but I think there were, there were 13 um, people that were appointed this year as traffic supervisors. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Berkowitz. Yeah, that guy there, I don't know. Thanks, Mr. Moderator. Bill Berkowitz, pressing date. A uh, question that's come up before regarding grants, and I'm looking at the blue budget book uh, from the school committee. Uh, we have a looking at page 16, uh, we have a grants coordinator, and one question I have is what percentage of time that person works? Dr. Bodie? Mm -hmm. Is your grant co coordinator part-time, full-time? That is a part-time position, mm -hmm. and it has sort of an ebb and flow to it um, with respect to when the grants uh, are, are applied for. And, uh, and sometimes we have to do compliance reports, certainly have to do compliance reports, accountability reports to the federal government, mm -hmm. and that person helps with that as well. By part-time, do you mean half-time or some other percentage of time? It's, I would say that it's, a, it's slightly, uh, it's very close to part, um, 0.5, but it's probably more like 0.4. Mm -hmm. On, uh, however, on page 20, of, again, again on this budget book, uh, this person is pulling in apparently upwards of $2 million in grants, which represent something like 5% of the school budget as I'm reading it here. Is that, is that correct? Um, actually, our grants represent a much bigger percentage of our budget than mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, with the non-override budget, it was as high as 15%. Mm -hmm. Some of those grants are entitlement grants, and some grants are grants that we apply for. Um, so it does represent a significant part of our budget. So given that we have a half-time person pulling in upper $2 million or upwards of grants, would it not be cost-effective to hire such a person for a greater percentage of time? Well, the answer probably would be yes. Um, but. What you have to understand too is this is our grant coordinator. Some of our grants are also, um, she works with department chairs, principals, the assistant superintendent to write grants. So there's more than one person in our school district that are involved in the, the writing and the, and the management mm -hmm. of grants. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm asking, as, you, as I think you understand, because I'm looking for additional sources of revenue and ways to maximize the revenue that we, that we do have. I'm aware that, for example, when we voted under the block grant development funds, this was Article 53, we voted for about $90,000 for a grants uh, administrator within the Department of Planning and Community Development, which presumably is pulling in a, a comparable percentage of, 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 of grant money. So it makes sense to me to have uh, more percentage of time writing grants. I, I would say in general that we, we've been trying to do the last few years is to sh shrink our, our administrative costs as much as possible. And um, I, in the ideal world, we probably would be great to have a full-time grants coordinator. Mm -hmm. But um, in the choices that have been made over the last couple of years, uh, we've made choices in other directions. I, primarily toward the classroom. I think I hear that, but again, this is a revenue source, so I'm just looking for ways to maximize the revenue for the school department. I have one more question, which is that on page 20, I believe, of the blue book, or 21, uh, there's a reference to grants declining in, uh, in the current fiscal year, if I'm not mistaken, from about 2.4 to 2.1. The grants were declining. Well, 
We've had grants um, that were federally funded, the ARC grants, and so there, that, those grants were not available to us. Um, certainly we have no, no part of federal stimulus money for next year. Sure. But, but we, there, our, our grants have been decreasing, and one of the things that we've done is we have projected what the, what the percent decrease has been in other grants. For example, um, medical grants have gone down 12%, 5%. There's just been a variety of, of percent decreases. Um, our federal grants, Title IIA, sometimes that, that's gone down as much as 12%. Mm -hmm. Title I has gone down. So when we're looking at a overall percentage, we take those, the, all of that into consideration. Thanks. I'm looking at uh, page 21, which does break out the grant totals here. And um, as you say, it does uh, show some reductions in grants from those that are expiring. But my question here is why are... Can you? My question here is why are not new grants being written and included in, apparently included in this breakout chain? Well, first of all, when we're, when we're putting this budget together, um, we have to do projections on the different grants. We don't have our grant allocations sometimes to the fall of the following year. Um, I, I won't know the Title IIA, actually I won't know a lot of these grants until much later in the summer, if not well into October. So that's one issue. As far as new grants, we are always looking for new grants. But one of the things that, that we have been finding over the last couple of years is that the, the grants that really would make, it would help with operating expenses, um, whether they be personnel or direct um, impact in the classroom, are very hard to find. Our Arlington doesn't necessarily qualify for some of those grants, but I, I can assure you that any, we are always looking, as soon as I get a grant notification, um, people are scouring other sites for grants. We, we have applied, and we've actually been fairly successful. We've had a Verizon grant that has um, been uh, about 10,000. It's not a lot, but it's made a big difference in some of our science programs. We've had a uh, federal emergency readiness, which is really, um, these are, it was pro pro uh, provided evacuation plans and emergency planning grant um, procedures that while we would certainly have liked to do, uh, we wouldn't have had the money to do. Um, that involved professional development and some and a whole other things. So we're always looking for grants. Thank you. Uh, and I can appreciate that new grants are hard to find, and for that reason it makes sense to me that you would have somebody who's working on a full-time basis to go find them. I'll conclude by saying that uh, I hope that the uh, the school department will reconsider its uh, allocation of money for a grant coordinator if this person is pulling in uh, upwards of $2 million in this fiscal year and has the prospect of pulling in proportionally more next fiscal year, which would, I think, justify the additional cost. I'll stop here and thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Tremblay. Ed Tremblay, Precinct 19. I'm kind of curious about the, uh, the two uh, school budgets uh, on, the, uh, on the blue book here on uh, line 75. It's called facilities for uh, around three and a half million dollars, and then the uh, education budget here on 20. It's you think the same thing. I, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Is operation maintenance programs for uh, five and a quarter million dollars. Not a lot of uh, detail on that. I'm kind of curious how much of that is, uh, you know, paying for um, fuel to eat the schools and the custodians and, and the, the regular, sort of the regular daily expenses. And, uh, uh, Diane Johnson, Chief Financial Officer for the School Department. Uh, a full detailed budget is available on the web and it is PDF searchable. So if you were to go to that PDF on our website and type in facilities, and continue to tab through it. It would take you to every citation in this whole book that mentions facilities, and you can see all the detail. Okay. Um, can you give like a nutshell of what, uh, how much of that, uh, you know, what, what are we looking at? It's our maintenance, it's the maintenance staff. They're actually the maintenance staff for the entire town. Okay. Um, we have um, the maintenance director, 
the uh, facilities director. We have all fuel, um, power, electricity, oil, gas, um, though with the closing of the Thompson, that'll be the end of the oil. Um, we have uh, paper products for the schools. You know, there's just a, a lawn care, um, exterior maintenance, interior maintenance, um, snow removal. Okay, I, I guess what I'm trying to get to is when, uh, when we, when we uh, talked about the Thompson uh, a few sessions ago, a number of sessions ago, uh, the proponents made a big deal about how the, uh, the kids were really, really hot in January and that that, that was a, uh, a reason, one reason we needed to have a new school because the, uh, the boilers were, uh, the heating system was really messed up because the kids were so hot. Well, if the kids are hot in January, that means the boilers are working really, really well and it's a lack of, it's a maintenance issue with the controls. So when the new Thompson is finished, we're going to have something like $75 million or something, something in that order of new schools. How much are we actually spending on maintenance? I mean, I think we have established that on the Thompson School, nobody was maintaining the heating system. Um, are we going to be, are we going to let the new schools go in that respect the way that we let the Thompson go? Um, well, obviously I'm relatively new to service here in Arlington, but it's very apparent to me looking at the long-term financial picture that the money doesn't exist to knock down schools and rebuild them, that we're going to be living with these schools for a very long time, so it would behoove us to take the very best care of them we can now. Most of them are new or renovated, with the exception of the Stratton, it's getting some major renovations, right. and so it's extremely important we continue to invest in the maintenance right now. Yeah, the Capital Committee is also spinning off a maintenance committee where these, dis these discussions are going to happen town-wide to look at, you know, right now there's sort of a gap between operating budget and capital budget, and this hopefully the development of this maintenance committee and budget will help bridge that gap so that we're doing more proactive maintenance and not just reactive maintenance. And, and I guess that's what I'm trying to get to is do you have a figure, uh, some, some dollar figure that you're aware of that, yes, we spent a million dollars maintaining, uh, you know, heating systems and roofs and, uh, doors and fixing holes in the walls. And, uh, I don't have that information off the top of my head, but this is the first year we're tracking the different types of maintenance efforts in the school, and so when I close out FY11, I will be able to answer that for you. Okay, and so what you say now, can I find this on the... Uh, the you can see that what's been budgeted yeah. online, okay. but the actual expenses for 11 obviously weren't available when we built this budget back in the winter. Right. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wagner? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and Craig Rayner, and Precinct Rubin. Um, I wanted to point to the simple version of the education budget um, that with the override, thanks to the town for voting yes, um, a huge difference is made in, in item A, instructional service programs. Without that, we'd be looking at a disaster. So to me, that that is amazing and it's good because that's that's the education that goes to the kids and the, the recipients in the, in the town. Um, I do have a question about um, with or without the override, the items for F, student out of, out of district, and uh, B, special education. I noticed that without the override, those numbers are basically the same. In other words, um, the, uh, the kids suffer, but those two services continue. And I wondered if, if there's any way that uh, the town can, can not be forced to, to pay those fees it can be shifted to other bodies, if anybody can answer that. Well, I think those are federally and state mandated requirements. Mm -hmm. You can ch get Congress to change it. Yeah, well, one of the state things... State legislature. One of the things that people who were complaining about the override were saying is, you know, schools spending all this money, and I guess it's, it's important for us as, as town meeting members to, to talk to our constituents, if you will, and point out that, that the schools don't have any, uh, any way to get around those costs, and uh, yes. the override basically looks like it went to improve directly item A, so I, I thank us for doing that. Um, I do have a question also uh, about the, uh, the budget overrun. Um, one of the things I was hearing as I talked to people in, in the last couple of weeks is um, there was a huge budget overrun in the school department and uh, nothing changed. So I hope I'm wrong. I was wondering if somebody could tell us what actions, I don't know what to say, maybe disciplinary actions or what changes in course have been made since that budget overrun that prevents that from happening again. Ms. 
Ms. Johnson is going to address that. Name and name and. Diane Johnson, Chief Financial Officer for the Arlington Public Schools. Um, when the school budgets are created, there are revenue assumptions that are that are made and voted and their expense exemptions that are made and voted. In the FY10 budget, our revenue assumption, the revenue assumptions that were made and voted were not realized. Actually, the expense portion of the budget came in right on target. So there was no over expenditure, there was an under availability of revenues that had been counted on. So that, that's a different thing than overspending. And I know that's a subtle distinction that probably I'm the only one who cares about, but it is an important distinction. In terms of control measures that have been put into place, we have a new chart of accounts, we have a new budget format, we are doing monthly reporting that are available on the web once they're presented to school committee. And I think we have a much improved system for maintaining uh, a close eye on what's going on in these budgets. The difference was that the systems that were in place during FY10 were designed at a time when there was much greater fiscal stability coming from state and other revenue sources. And also there was a significant amount of reserves that the schools held. Now, by FY10, the reserves had been entirely, or largely, if not entirely, exhausted. And as we all know, the economy went crazy. And the, the systems in place, while adequate for many years prior to that, were just not adequate to that kind of bounce that was going on. It was just not able to get a beat on it. But I feel the new systems we put in place are able to track much more closely. Thank you. I guess I would just like to say that um, although this is not my opinion, the opinion of perhaps the uninformed masses of the town, and they may be watching and listening to us, is that there was some frustration over that, and I hope that, uh, that the uh, changes can be communicated to the uh, town as much as is possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wagner. Um, there's a gentleman in the right, my right back, right, you, sir. Lynn Card, Precinct 20. Um, looking at the budget summary, uh, I noticed that the difference between the service level budget and the non-override budget at the Thompson School is 470,000. And I realize that a large chunk of that are classroom teachers that will be restored. But part of that is also the principal who's not going to be restored, janitors, the secretary, what are those funds going to be spent on? Are there plans for that yet? Doctor? <coughs> what the override provided is, is a level of service from this year. So all of those positions that were slated to be cut will still be positions within the, um, the Arlington Public Schools. Now, there is one exception when you mentioned principal. Um, in the move from Thompson to now three schools, Hardy, Bishop, and Stratton, um, we have Mr. Brown who is retiring, as, as I know many of you know, and Ms. Donovan is going to be the principal at Stratton Elementary, the, in, the principal there as well as retaining being principal uh, at Thompson. Now, we are going to use some of the, the, the money that's been realized by this override to help fund, um, we're going to have uh, assistant lead teachers to help Ms. Donovan at Stratton. So we have custodial, we have teachers, we have custodians. All of those positions will be retained and just are reappointed to, to other places in the district. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dice. again that uh, in this short budget uh, that's B and E and, and F excuse me uh, both of which are special education costs are a very large in proportion to the budget they represent something like 30 or 35 percent of the budget and they also are increasing in each case by 
27 percent. 20, and uh, at a presentation that uh, the superintendent and, and the uh, financial officer did to the finance committee, we spoke uh, a good deal about the fact that those budgets have to be managed. That's to say, special education has to be managed carefully. And in fact, the schools have done quite a good job over the last 10 years or so with a person who was in charge of special education and the cost of special <coughs> education. And uh, as I understood it, the schools lost that person. That person went on uh, to another position somewhere else. So my question uh, to the superintendent is, uh, have you a plan or have you uh, replaced that person and uh, what's the likelihood that uh, we can continue, to, we can make good progress in the future on controlling those costs? Dr. Bodie? Thank you, Mr. Dice, for the question. Um, we have made good progress, and our progress in uh, holding down the cost of special education is to develop really high quality programs in district. Um, what we're doing is something that other districts are doing as well. There's always an investment that's involved in developing these programs, but when you look at the cost per student, it's, we, we save a lot of money. We have been able to, uh, to change the rate of growth with special education. Our rate of growth over 10 years has been somewhere around 10%, but the last couple of years, um, it's been easily halved to that. Now, there are some times that the needs of students do not match our in-district programs, and they're going to have to go out of district, and because it would not be cost beneficial for us to provide some of the programming that these students need. So I anticipate that there will always be some number of students that are going to be in out of district placements. And those costs, in some ways, we have no control over. Um, the uh, Department of Education pretty much uh, has the total control in terms of approving tuition increases. So our long-term plan with respect to special education is not going to change even though our current director is um, moving on to another position. The direction is still the same and the direction is that we need to provide high quality in-district special education programs. Um, when our, when we, we can't, it's not cost effective to do that be, because we might only have a couple students need a particular service, then we would um, have our students in the lab program, which we are part of a, co a collaborative, which also keeps the cost of um, out of district tuitions down. Do you, do you plan to replace that director? What, I'm, what we're planning to do right now, the answer is yes, but I'm not sure what the, the, the um, the structure will look like. There are some other districts that have been looking at, um, at different structures where they have an assistant superintendent and a number of co-directors or coordinators. And, and this is an opportunity to do some research into that. We will have an interim um, person for next, uh, for next year. And the idea that uh, we'll, we'll, after research and involving the parents, the, the CPAC in, in looking at this, make a recommendation to the school committee and probably be looking for a replacement next December. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Judd. I'm in Judd Precinct 9. Before I get into this, Mr. Moderator, is it possible for us to finish this evening even if we stay a little extra time? Or is that too much more to be accomplished? Now say that again, sir. Is it possible we can end the town meeting tonight? If we can, you know, well, we, go. Can, we can terminate the debate on the education budget and blow through the rest of them in the last three articles, we can end the town meeting tonight. But if the people want to talk, we're going to talk. I understand that. What I am trying to find out, though, is if we have a possibility of completing town meeting tonight before the air conditioning breaks down. <clears throat> uh, I will certainly pass on anything further that I might have to question or say. Oh, if good. that will 
you know, before anybody starts to uh, move adjournment, I'd like to see if we can finish tonight. I, I'd like personally like to finish tonight, but you know, it's 10 to 11. We've well, got a number of budgets to go through and three more articles. There's uh -huh. one, two, three, four, four more budgets to go through. And you know, this is our, you know, this is what we do when we pass budgets. So we just don't want to rush anybody if they want to talk about it. So okay. do you have a question on the school budget? Yep, two or three questions, but the main one is on the bottom line of the, because by the way, town meeting, all we have to vote is article, uh, is the article uh, that is shown here in the budget book, uh, the breakdown of anything at, You're basically, we vote their bottom line. Yeah. You got a question there, Lyman, or what? I say I have, I do have a question. I just lost my question. Well, you, you want to pass I what I want. until you find I, If you, no. Very simple. There's a asterisk at uh, 2010, 11, and 12 stating these appropriations are not include, do not include federal funds which go directly to the schools without appropriation. I would just be curious if in now and in the future we could be told how much that is, even though we do not appropriate. And the other thing is, I noticed that we got the bottom line, I think, in the budget book is, uh, let me see, uh, 38, 38 million, and we all 40, no. Wait, magnifying glass here. Yeah. When you add up 42 million, 536,438 dollars. Okay, that's uh, pretty good. Um, the other question would I, I would have All right, to Ms. ask. Johnson, wait a second. Okay. Ms. Johnson, can you give us the figures <coughs> next year? Uh, I certainly can. The, okay. Including the um, wage adjustment, um, Diane Johnson, Chief Financial Officer, <coughs> including the wage adjustment from the new contract agreements, our total budget for next year, all funding sources included, is $47,790,251. Thank you for a very accurate, I hope, uh, Thank you. reply. But the other thing I noticed, too, is on item B, special ed, and also item F, which is also special ed, are we being reimbursed by the Department of Education at the rate that they are supposed to reimburse us? Are we give, or is this another case of the state telling us, do something, but we won't pay for it? Yes. Yes to both. They set the rate at which they'll reimburse us, and that can fluctuate depending on their funding. And yes, they tell us to do plenty without funding it. That's nice. Well, that's the only thing I can say. And I know in the past, other towns and cities which were dissatisfied with the way the uh, cherry sheet was being appro uh, distributed had a class action suit that finally got us around to getting something in the range of equitable assessments so you can compare apples yeah. and oranges. So okay. I'm just hoping that perhaps we can possibly drive the legislature bring, into paying you'd us. You'd have to bring up soon that with the selectmen. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Mr. McCory. Hugh McCory, Precinct 20. Um, Mr. Moderator, just a quick question for the school superintendent. Yeah. So it's just really to confirm, uh, so the, uh, the, add back that's in the, the add back that's in the budget, that is to, uh, to maintain the 64.6 .6 full-time positions that's specified on page 30, I believe. Is that correct? Talk to Yes. Yes. So uh, you mentioned earlier that their traffic supervisors may or may not be uh, restored. Does that mean uh, there may be... Uh, all the positions, people, um, full time, full time employment positions in other areas, or she said just keeping the third budget that she had this year. Any position that we had in the in the budget this year will be restored for next year. In addition to that, we also received uh, an additional allocation of six hundred thousand, which will be divided. Um, that that amount of money will allow us to have physical education 
in our elementary schools two times a week, which is what had been the true two years ago, and also um, provide more elective courses in the middle of the high school. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bayer. Okay, Mr. Bears, move to terminate debate on the education budget. Is that a second? Second. Yes. All in favor of terminating debate on education, please say yes. 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 All opposed say no. no. My opinion, that is two thirds. Okay, that brings us to libraries. Remember, the next one we held was libraries. Who wanted to talk about libraries? Mr. Loretti. Just one question on the adult services librarians. The um, numbers in parentheses indicating the staffing levels seem to indicate um, equal staffing over the past few years, yet the budget's increasing almost 30% this year. And I was wondering if someone could explain that. Ms. Love? Uh, Mary Ellen Loud, Library Director. So you're talking about the adult services librarians, the... Yeah, and I'm looking at there are four, uh, three floors in parentheses indicating the staffing levels. Um, but when I read over to the far right, it looks like the percent change from 2011 is almost 30%. And I'm trying to understand why that is. I think I'm going to have to look at my budget book, I'm sorry, um, because we do have the same number of adult services librarians projected for 12 in full time um, as we had in 2011. I'm sorry, I am going to okay. have to look Mr. at that. Mr. Toss, did you know um, if that includes any other position? Bruins four, Canucks zero. Is that the game end? Bruins win four to nothing. Yankees six, Red Sox eleven. Red Sox and Bruins both win. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, my Thank guess you. here is that it should have been two, three, or three, 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 and then a, and then a four. But you know, the the increase in that budget, and you'll notice there's several decreases in other areas. You know, the total put back is the 144.334. Um, you know, the budgets were examined by all the department heads, so I, you know, I, I can't answer your question. But Thank it, you. it's the total of dollars that allows them to hire, not the parentheses, is just for information. In this case, it, there could be an error there. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to discuss libraries? Nope. Okay, that brings us to. Health and Human Services. Who wanted to discuss Health and Human Services? Mr. Judd. There's uh, no one seconded it. Okay. Okay. Do you really want to adjourn? Or you want to come back Monday? No. Keep going. It's not. All right. I know. All in favor of adjournment, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. No. Okay, who wanted, Mr. Judd, what's your question? That's a negative vote in the adjournment. Okay, I'm just asking, on the uh, budget book from Finance Committee, I see under uh, detail of personnel services, health compliance officer slash. Well, you, you, why don't you move back into the light so you can see better? Then you can see and, and yeah. talk into the mic at the same time. Yeah, okay. Health compliance officer slash sewer part time. Now, does the override restoration mean that we will have a sealer of weights and measures or not? Because I think that's something we can't do without. Um, Ms. Connolly? Christine Connolly, Director of Health and Human Services. Yes, we will. Thank, that's all I need to know for the moment. Thank okay. you. Anyone else wish to discuss health and human? 
human services. Nope, the next budget that was held was insurance. Who wanted to discuss insurance? Pass. Pass, okay. Anyone else? No one else wants to discuss insurance. Water and sewer? Pass. Anyone else want to discuss water and sewer? Nope. That brings us to the end. Okay. So we have before us all the budgets in, as recommended by the Finance Committee in Appendix B. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. My opinion, was there a no back there? No. My opinion, it's a nearly unanimous vote. It's approved. We approved the budgets. Okay, that brings us to Article Approved 68. Uh, appropriation for post-employment benefits OPED trust fund. We have before us a recommended vote. Uh, is put in your chair. Sir. Who said that? Mr. McCory. Oh, Mr. No. We're going to have three more articles, dude. We're going to finish. Wait, we have to dispose of his movement to adjourn because there's a motion. All in favor of adjournment? Opposed? No. No. Okay. Please stop making those motions to adjourn. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Foster. Mr. Moderator, can you reset the clock, please? Yes, I will, sir. Um, Mr. Moderator, with your permission, I'm going to loosely uh, discuss both uh, Article 68 and 69 in the interest of saving time. That's very good, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, Article uh, 68 is a substitute motion by Mr. Tosti with respect to uh, the uh, uh, appropriation for OPEP post, uh, other post employment benefits. The first part of that, uh, Article A, uh, uh, is to uh, 389,000 represents the difference between um, a baseline figure of 500,000, which, which we have traditionally voted for the um, non contributory retirement system. And as the members of that system who work for the town before 1939 um, pass on, the actual cost in that uh, system drops. So we're putting the balance available between that actual number and the $500,000 into the OPEB account. The second appropriation is not quite the amount that we have previously voted in prior years to the OPEB account, $110,311, but it's the amount that we were able to uh, put together this year. And this is part of a general consideration. I'd like to remind you that earlier tonight, the town manager spoke about the negotiations with the unions and the fact that there was concession uh, on uh, health insurance uh, costs uh, that part of, as part of negotiation for salary increases. And um, with respect to retirees, uh, sort of in a general way, the retirement board represents the retirees, and the finance committee is often involved in uh, trying to pull together all the various uh, components of this. Now, with the changes in the health insurance plan that have been adopted by some of the unions, the um, responsibility is going to fall on the board of selectmen to rationalize the uh, contributions from all uh, parts of the town, including um, salaried employees and including uh, retirees, and, and they'll be starting that process. In general discussions with the Retirement Board, the Retirement Board has um, generally made some uh, uh, indica indication that they will uh, consider in their future actions uh, some points which I think are important for the town meeting to understand. First of all, uh, they will uh, uh, seriously uh, work with the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, on rationalizing the health insurance uh, payments so that all the city, all the uh, town employees and retirees are uh, treated fairly with respect to the uh, contributions to the retirement system. Uh, I also like to point out to you that going back about 15 years ago, when the town adopted some legislation that allowed the uh, retirement board to give COLA increases to the uh, retirees without coming before town meeting, this was done with an uh, informal agreement with the uh, Finance Committee that they would not grant such COLA increases in years when the um, employees didn't get them. And last year, um, for the first time in 15 years, and with, after some um, 
uh, some sharp debate, the retirement board uh, kept to that commitment and did not vote a COLA increase for retirees. This year there's a 2% uh, increase going to town employees, so the finance committee is indicating its agreement that a, uh, a COLA increase go to the uh, retirement board. The Finance Committee, as part of this overall uh, consideration with respect to the retirees, is supporting the Retirement Board's recommendation that we increase the COLA base from $12,000 to $15,000. In other words, um, a COLA is normally 3% of the first $12,000 of a retiree's compensation, and we are recommending that this be increased $1,000 a year over the next three years, and that's the vote that you have in Article 69. Um, Town meeting has already voted an increase in uh, retirement benefits for the uh, for certain survivors. This was an article that you adopted earlier uh, in this meeting. And finally, as a part of this overall consideration, the retirement board uh, is asking its actuary to look at the uh, con contribution that the town is going to be asked to pay over the next several years, starting in fiscal year, not 12, but in fiscal year 13. Uh, to make an attempt to constrain the, in, the annual increase in the contribution to the retirement system from 6% uh, to 5%, which is going to be overall a big benefit for the operating budgets of the town. So with, with all of these uh, considered uh, in, a, in a package as a sort of cooperative effort between the town manager, the finance committee, and the retirement board, uh, we're asking uh, your support of Article 68 as recommended. And we're also asking your support of Article 69, where the uh, which is it, which is asking for the um, increase from actually, um, Mr. Moderator. Uh, let's just take Article 68 first. That's a, yep, that's the way I'm going to do it. That's a, a motion by Mr. Tosti, and, and it's in front of uh, all of, all of the uh, members of the town meeting. Right, you would. Know, Today they had a substitute motion in the back of the hall, dated June 8th by Mr. Tosti. Is there a second on that substitute motion? Seconded, thank you. Anyone wish to discuss, are you done, Mr. Foskett? I'm done in uh, yeah, your presentation. Okay, does anyone wish to discuss Article 68? Any questions? Mr. McCabe. very important that we uh, thank our finance committee, our capital budget committee, and all of our town officials for a great job under some very trying circumstances. Okay. That really wasn't within the scope. Anybody else wish to discuss 68? Okay, first, we have no other discussion on Article 68. First, we have this, we're going to substitute the motion. All in favor of substituting Mr. Tosti's June 8th substitute motion for the motion presented earlier, please say yes. Yes. Okay, now we're going to vote it as substituted. All in favor of Article 68 as substituted, please say yes. Yes. All opposed say no. It is a unanimous vote, and I so declare it. Now that brings us to Article 69. Mr. Um, Foskett, do you have anything else to say about Article 69? No. No, sir. I just want to make the substitute motion that's in front of the members. Okay. Okay. We have a second on that motion. Um, anyone wish to discuss Article 69? Okay. So we have first Mr. Tosti, uh, Mr. Foskett's motion of June 7th that was given to us today. All in favor of substituting that motion, please say yes. Yes. All opposed say no. Done. Okay. It is substituted. All in favor of Article 69? Recommend a vote on Article 69. As substituted, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? That is a unanimous vote. Unanimous. That brings us to our very last article, number 75. Mr. Tosti. Where'd 75 go? Oh, it's on the back. Uh -huh. Article 75 is on the back of Article 68. We tried to save one or two trees. Uh, so if you look on the back of 68, you'll see Article 60, 75. This is the appropriation for the stabilization fund. Uh, and this obviously is directly tied with the uh, uh, successful override. Uh, this is money that will be set aside in the fiscal stability fund, much as we did back in 2005. 
Uh, and then this money will be used in fiscal 2013 and 2014, and maybe even in 2015, if we can pull this together, uh, uh, to, to make sure there's no need for any more overruns. So basically, we're doing the same thing we did back in 2005 town meeting uh, with the successful override at that point. Okay, do we have a second on Mr. Second. Seconded. Okay, Mr. Tosti, substitute motion is seconded. Okay, Mr. Fuller. Thank you, Peter Fuller, Precinct 20. Uh, in 2005, after the override, we put some of the money into the st uh, stabilization fund to use in future years. Um, as I recollect, some of that money was invested in a way that it sustained some losses. Are there any protections that we have now so that won't happen again? Who wishes to address that? Mr. Gilligan? As requested by town meeting, uh, all stabilization funds are in either our banking services depository, which, uh, based on a new RFP and contract that was executed, is 100% fully collateralized above any FDIC insurance, and or in the Massachusetts Municipal Depository Trust, which is also backed by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you, sir. Glad to hear it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Wagner? Pass. Pass, okay. <laughs> Anyone else wish to discuss Article 75? 2,603,139. Oh. All in favor of Mr. Uh, of substituting the substitute motion for the main motion, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? It is substituted. All in favor of the article as substituted, please say yes. Yes. All opposed say no. Okay, that is unanimous vote. Um, by my calculations, we have disposed of every article in front of the meeting on the warrant for 2011. Um, Mr. Tosti, may I prevail upon you? Since I believe Article 3 has been taken off the table at the beginning of town meeting, uh, I move that the 2011 annual town meeting be dissolved. All in favor of dissolving the annual 2011 town meeting, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? That's an affirmative vote. Thank you all very much. We did a good job this year, and we got done in 10 meetings. Thank you for staying a little later this evening. See you next year. <laughs>